Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're here to play War of the Ring. You guys have been asking us since we played it before on the channel that we should play more War of the Ring on the channel. And we've it's been a couple of years since we played War of the Ring, and you guys have been demanding it, commenting, messaging, all this stuff. So we're finally here to play more War of the Ring. I don't think this is the War of the Ring that they've been asking for. This isn't the same War of the Ring. They were emailing me and threatening my family and, and, and my life and everything to play again or, or the leave. No. Uh-oh. Well, it says War of the Ring on it, <laughs> but it's the card game. We are here to play War of the Ring, the card game, the two to four player game by Ares Games. Uh, hello, everyone joining live. Hello to you watching later. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Uh, shout out to all the awesome names scrolling by on the top of the screen for supporting the channel. If you'd like to donate or support the channel in any way, check the video description down below and uh, either join us on Patreon or join us on YouTube and become a member and support the channel. Help us grow and improve, travel to conventions, buy more games and Kickstarters and things and uh, better camera and audio equipment. Keep on growing. Thank you for being here. Much appreciated. So if you're new here, this is Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. That's Mel, like we said. Uh, we mainly play pretty medium to heavy, usually focus on those kind of weighted uh, tabletop board games in the modern board game hobby like this one. And we usually do full playthroughs, explaining the game, playing through it, giving our thoughts, that kind of stuff. We've been here since like 2013 uh, or 2014 around there doing this. So we've been here for a while. Uh, if you're looking for War of the Ring the Board game or Lord of the Rings themed games or any of that kind of stuff, check the video description. There's links. Uh, or check our playlist section. We play lots of fantasy themed campaign games and other other cool games on the channel. So you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button. Check us out. Um, but full disclosure, uh, the folks over at Ares Games uh, invited us to check out a demo of this game at Gen Con 2022 a few weeks back. And we did. And um, they admitted that uh, it probably wasn't going to be the best experience for filming. And I asked, I said, could I film it? And they're like, yeah, you can, but it's going to be in the booth, surrounded by tons of people, basically in the aisle. I didn't realize, but it was in the aisle pretty much. So everyone walking by, yelling, shouting, kids screaming, were all happening literally right, like hitting me in the back as I'm playing. Super annoying. Not the best uh, environment to film in, but we did live stream it. Uh, just an impromptu live stream. A lot of you guys watched it. It was fun. Um, but the folks over at Aries Games offered me, said, since it's not the best filming environment, we can send you a demo copy of the same one you're playing, and you can play it on the channel in the better sound and lighting environment and that kind of stuff. So full disclosure, this is a demo copy sent to us. Um, and uh, yeah, by Aries Games. So um, I believe it's coming out later at Essen or later this year. It's, it's launching, but uh, we're playing with a prototype today uh, or a demo copy or whatever. Um, so yeah. So just so you know, so this is War of the Ring, the card game. And uh, yeah, we'll be playing it on the channel. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Let's see anything in the chat. Yeah, two to four players, Kevin. Two to four players. Uh, Elcor, I am going to talk about the modes later. I'll go over what we're doing today and the modes we're playing, the scenarios we're playing from the game. There is much you can play in this game. Uh, and we'll go over more of the detail near the end of the stream. Maybe give a little bit of thoughts um, and everything on those other scenarios. We obviously can only play one scenario today. I don't want to be here for 12 hours. So if I were to play every single variation and scenario that's in the game, uh, it might be a while. We have played almost every scenario in the game um, preparing for the stream. So I've, I've kind of seen it all except for one of the scenarios. And we've only been playing two players. So we haven't played the full four or even three player stuff either. So just let you know. We did play four player at Gen Con though. Oh, we did play four player. Derp, yeah. derp, 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 <laughs> which I just talked about. We live streamed. <laughs> you can go see how it plays full four player. Duh. All right. Anyways. Um, yeah. So we're here to play. Thank you everyone for subscribing. Hit the like button. Help other people find this video. Feel free to share it and all that kind of stuff. But you're in the right place um, to see more War of the Ring. Um, if you want to see more War of the Ring or Lord of the Rings IP games, we play Lord of the Rings LCG on the channel too and stuff like that. So uh, hit subscribe, hit subscribe. Uh, Julian, no, this is not an LCG because it's not published by Fantasy Flight Games or Asmodee who own the rights to the term LCG living card game. So no, it's not that. It can never be that unless Asmodee buys Ares games and then starts making them make LCGs. And no, it's not an expandable card game. <laughs> which is the generic term you should be using. <laughs> but anyways, not yet at least. Not yet. Not yet. It seems to be a contained game, but I don't know anything. I mean, 
playing it a few times, I've mentioned like, oh, it'd be cool if they added this to it or that to it. So there could be an expansion. I'm sure if it sells well as all board games and tabletop games, if they sell well, you'll see an expansion is kind of a given unless they just can't because of IP reasons or design reasons or something like that. But hello, hello. Hey, Larry. Hey, Andy. Uh, all right. So uh, again, today's stream. So the goal of today's stream uh, is to go over the rules as best we can with the rules overview before we play. We will do as we usually do, uh, get, you, get you caught up on the rules before we get into playing it, and then we will play it. We're going to play a full playthrough today, and anything we kind of didn't go deep in at the beginning in the rules overview, obviously we'll go over as we're playing the game, and you'll kind of see it visually in action as we fully play it from beginning to end. After we're done that, we will go over the other modes that are in the game, the other scenarios, and we'll, we'll bring up the rulebook, we'll go over that. And we'll kind of give our initial little thoughts on it. Again, we're playing a demo. We're only playing two player. We've only played this game like five or six times. So, and we're still not masters of it. So take that for what you will. Um, so yeah, today is not. So those are the things we're doing today. Explaining how the game works to you. Showing you a full playthrough. And explaining the modes in this demo game that is not final yet. Um, that's coming out later. We are not here to teach you how to win to show you if it's balanced, to kind of go to the nitty gritty and review the game, review the cards, um, you know, give you the, the, you should you buy it or not, and none of that stuff. That's up to you. You just need to see how the game works and see how a game plays. That's all we're giving you today. Okay, you take that information how you will, uh, but that's what the goal of today's stream is. Nothing more, nothing less. There may be some fun included, I guess. No fun. <laughs> Serious business today. Serious business. Okay, this is not a game. This is real life. All right. Um, what else do I need to mention? Uh, we are going to play the trilogy mode today. I see some asking. We're playing the trilogy mode, which can be played two to four players. Obviously, we're playing it two players. So you'll see how that works at two player. Um, I'm actually curious. <laughs> Semper's out. <laughs> Semper's like, bye. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> I am curious. What player count you would be playing this game at? Oh, no wizard hat. That was a missed opportunity. Uh, I'm not, I don't know if I'm allowed to wear that in this, these videos. Oh, can I wear it? Those, those are for sure allowed in Uthia videos and Lord of the Rings LCG videos. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to wear them in War of the Ring videos. That's never been discussed with my bosses, a.k.a. all those people's names scrolling by up there. Well, Yogi, who's one of them, is giving you the permission. Oh, crap. Course. I'm going to be in trouble again. Is it too another, far? another line in my file, how I didn't wear my wizard hat again. Um, yeah. I can get it. Well, where is it? Isn't it? I don't need to do, like... All right. Uh, okay, you're muted. So you can you can disconnect and, and try to grab it. I don't know, somewhere over there, I think. Honestly, Yogi, I lose it. I like put it somewhere at the end, and then I, I re. Oh, you found it. <laughs> I don't even know what room I last dropped it in. You know, I I usually wear it out to go check the mail and stuff. So sometimes I leave it like by the front door and you know <laughs> that kind of stuff. A wizard hat is never late. It arrives exactly, or it's never early or never late, right? It arrives exactly when it means to. All right, there we go. I don't know if the hat will actually be thematic for this playthrough per no. se, but we may have to switch. Yeah, I'm the shadow player, so Mel <laughs> obviously is going to have to wear this because she has Gandalf in one of her decks. So we are playing the trilogy mode, like I said, which can be played two to four players. Um, and there is other modes. There's like a dual mode for two player and stuff. We'll get into all the details on those at the end of the stream. Um... But we're going to focus on the trilogy mode today because that's the way we were demoed to it. That's the way they want to show off the game, at least at Gen Con stuff, but they had four players, so I don't know. Um, and then I asked them which mode we can play, and they said play whatever you want. So we're going to play this trilogy mode because the one we played the most. And I'm assuming if you have three players or even four players, you might play it this way. So we're going to show it off this way first. Then we'll explain the dual modes options but there is also a fellowship of the ring version you can play and we'll explain all those at the end of the video how they're different and we can give you our thoughts on each of those later as was being asked in the chat but what we can also do is if there's enough interest on this video if you're watching later if you're watching later i want you to comment down below and let me know if you're interested in seeing like us play the two-player dual mode 
Okay, and I'll describe more of that at the end of the stream and I'll ask you guys again then. So I'll remind you. So if you're still here, as soon as the stream ends, you can go comment and, and let me know. Or we can do a poll at the end of the stream too um, to gauge interest for those who showed up late and all that kind of stuff. But I'm curious, like I, I could do another stream of this where we just play the dual mode, just quick and dirty. We don't get into like the deep rules. We just play it again, which we do with a lot of games, you guys know. We try them in the different modes. So I'm totally a game for trying even the, uh, two of the other modes if you want in two separate streams. Um, but I'll only gauge interest. If people get the idea from this playthrough how the game works, which it's kind of similar, um, and you don't need that extra to know, then we'll just wait till the game's out, and uh, we'll play it then. So um, I am curious, though. I just put a poll in the chat, but I'm curious. Uh, now that you guys are talking about it, I, I didn't think about this, but I should have pulled in advance to ask what version you guys want us to play. Oh, yeah, that would have been smart. I should have done that, but I only knew like two days ago, like we could have chosen. I just thought we were playing the basic version that's in the rules and taught and then not the variants. But I mean, they're all like similar. They just have some tweaked rules to them. Um, but I put a poll in the chat. I'm curious if you're watching this live, go vote in the chat. I'm curious what player amount will you would you play this game at? If I were to give you this game today, how many players would you be playing it at in your own group? Like, do you have people you can bring it to board game night and play four player? And that's the way you would play this game. Or are you mainly playing it at two player at home all the time? Do you have a third player that you'd be playing with it a lot? Because this does have three player focus modes also. So uh, it's two to four player. Solo is not an option unless you want to keep getting up from your seat and going around the other side of the table and playing against yourself. But I don't recommend that. I don't this recommend is, that either. No, this is not the type of game. There's, there's many, 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 many amazing solo games out there. Please do not buy this to play against yourself. This is not that type of game. Just let me give that heads up at least. Based on all the play we've done, there's no reason to play against yourself. Please don't do that. If you are, you need to talk to your family doctor and try to seek help, okay? Okay, just check, just to make sure. If you start, if you're like, if you have someone else talking to you, um, you might be suffering from Smeagolitis or uh, a go Golemitis, maybe, maybe, and you're kind of like talking to yourself, then you might need help, okay? Then if that is the case, you probably could play against yourself. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you could. So I stand corrected. Maybe you can play against yourself if you are hearing another voice talking to you. So there is that possibility. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Dan, is that true or are you just making that up? Dan in the chat says uh, he thinks they're working. Uh, Aries Games said they are working on a solo mode expansion. Oh, they could like every every game needs it nowadays. Like after COVID, right? If you don't put a solo mode in your game, you're like leaving money on the table, right? Um, because after COVID, people realize like I'm sure a lot of game groups out there got hurt by it. And there's people that don't want to show up to game stores anymore to like meet randoms and play because they're like anxious and stuff and maybe just stick to their small group at home or themselves. So there's always that too. No. It's prompting me then, but sure. Um, I think there is a place for a solo mode. Like, there is an expansion that I can see them making. Absolutely. For sure, for this game. But I think it would be one of those silly ones where it's like, okay, after it's you like play a card, like, flip a card and they do this, or they flip the random cards off the top of their deck and put them to this place. And I see, like, it being one of those ones where it puts numbers on places and, and battlefields. Or yeah. Anyways, let's not get I, into yeah. that. It's not what today's video is about, uh, or today's stream is about. For those that are curious, War of the Ring, the card game, coming out later this year again. The weight so far on BGG is a 2.40 out of 5, so not crazy. Strategy is pretty deep, but the rules themselves, it's its not that complex of a game to learn how to play it, but mastering it, I don't know. It might take some time. It might take some time. Uh, two to four players, supposedly best with four, from the people who've just play tested and the people who demoed it at Gen Con. I, I don't know how many other people have played this. Maybe there's a TTS demo or something I don't know about, but uh, 90 to 120 minutes. So one to two hours this takes to play, age 12 plus supposedly. It's designed by Ian Brody, who I believe is the designer of there's a series they were, when they were demoing to us, they were talking about was the Quartermaster General series. I believe Ian Brody's the designer of that series and Ares Games now produces that game. And it's very similar. Supposedly they, they took the DNA of that game and they worked with, uh, oh, we got a super chat. 
Uh, Bram, thank you so much for the donation. Much appreciated. Thanks for clicking thank that super you. chat button. Much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank Bram you. Bram does have a message. Maybe didn't know how to put it oh. together, but says, mostly anticipated game this year for me. Have fun and happy you guys are showing it off. Oh, we will be showing it off. Yes, Thanks, that's Bram. What, we're here today. Yes, I'm so excited we have a copy. That's awesome. Um, so, uh, Ian supposedly designed the Quartermaster General series and supposedly Roberto, one of the designers who also worked on this game and worked on some of the variants or the uh, other scenarios in the game, um, he demoed it to us. So Roberto, who worked on War of the Ring 2nd Edition, kind of fanboyed out a little there when we found out he was demoing it to us. So it was pretty awesome. Uh, again, you can see that live. Check the video description. But uh, he explained to us that this, is, I think, is based on the Quartermaster General series of games. So if you've ever played those games, this might be kind of similar, but it's obviously they work together with the War of the Ring or Lord of the Rings IP and that kind of stuff to fit that kind of game into this kind of game. So it's like, it, you'll probably notice some differences if you played that one. At least that's what they explained to us. I've never played those, but I just want to throw it out there. If you played that, you might be like, oh, I like that game. Oh, I would like a War, uh, Lord of the Rings version or similar kind of game so that's 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 supposedly the history there but again i'm just relaying that like second hand so i don't know for sure uh, but just want to throw it out there if you're curious uh aries did something awesome and they actually shared the rules for this game and it was already up before we demoed it i wish i yeah. knew that so i would have read them before going and demoing it at gen con <laughs> so then i could ask questions instead of just being like lost um i tried to ask some questions but yeah, yeah. having read the rules would have been yeah when you're like better. tired on day three of gen con and you're like in the middle of a busy hall and they're like trying to teach you a game like this you're like what what did you just <laughs> say whoa why are you talking so fast or you take it in but it doesn't necessarily retain for the whole entire playthrough <laughs> yeah but i've linked this rule book down in the video description if you want to bring up the rule book the same one we're using you can go read this game fully so i love when companies actually are not afraid to share their rule book ahead of time and they're confident, it shows confidence in their game instead of like some of these Kickstarters that hide the rule books from you, take your millions of dollars and then go, oh yeah, here's our crappy rule book for our boring ass game. Uh, so these guys are confident, they shared the rule book already, so you can go check it out um, and fully read the rule book front to back before you ever spend a penny on the game, which is, I, I, that's the way it needs to be done. That's the way it needs to be done. So shout out to Aries Games for that one. Good job on you. And uh, yeah, take note, take note publishers. Um, so again, link down in the video description. <clears throat> okay, uh, so this is War of the Ring, the card game. And I'm already getting too hot wearing this, <laughs> this hat. I get way too hot wearing that. Um, but yeah. So War of the Ring, the card game, again, this was uh, this copy. Uh, thank you to Aries Games. I don't know who Demo is. But Demo, who worked on this game, obviously is one of the people who worked on it. He signed our copy um, and also signed all of our cards on the back with, with his name, Demo. So uh, I don't know who you are, but... Uh, I think they're on some... They're on all of our yeah, cards Yeah, thank well. you. Yeah. Thank you, Demo, for signing all of our cards. Okay, all on the back and the front. Uh, thank you, Demo, for going crazy with your stamp and stamping every single um, piece of paper in this game. Um, so shout out to you, Demo, whoever you are. Uh, so yeah, so they, they made this box. I just want to read, um, just read their little letter though. Part of it, at least. Rob, you are amazing. You're the best person at, oh no, I shouldn't read all that <laughs> stuff. Uh, okay. In this preview set, you'll find the complete rules, decks, and tokens for a full gameplay experience. Please note, this is not a final product. The rules, cards, tokens, and box are digital print with reasonable quality and final art, but not the same color quality and material of production copies. So the art is like really dark on this. If anyone's ever prototyped games before, you know, like the color printing is like, it doesn't pop on this, but we've seen like War of the Ring and stuff. Like, you know, it'll look better. The box is also smaller than the actual production size, which will also include a tray for the cards and tokens. And we got it. We just got it full of packing material. So just so you know, this is just a prototype box. Um, but yeah, still looks pretty cool. Um, but it was cool they shipped in that they didn't need to. A lot of companies will send you a prototype and it's just like in plastic bags. So it was kind of neat. But anyways, I just want to let you guys know, disclaimer, it is a prototype copy, obviously, but near final, I guess. <laughs> oh, they missed the N at the end of his name. Oh, I get it. It was just the cards were too big or a stamp was too big. It's supposed to say demon. Oh, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> It's obviously a demo copy, okay? <laughs> Anyone who didn't get the joke, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so 
Someone's going to comment down below. You're an idiot. It's a demo, stupid. <laughs> You're so dumb. I click, click dislike and left the video. Uh, all right. <laughs> so, uh, let's go over the game. Let's go over the rules. Uh, you don't need to shuffle because we're going to look at some cards. Oh, of sorry. Course. I just... So, uh, overview of War of the Rings. Okay. It's a two to four player game where we play on two teams. So that should help you understand if you're playing two player, which we are. We have two teams. We have the shadow player on my side here. We have Mel is the free people's player on her side. Okay. We're playing the trilogy mode, which we have four separate decks. So this is the mode that is taught in the rules. It's taught at four players. It's the one that they demo. You can fully play it at two players. All you're literally doing is playing each deck separately. And they even include a cool turn track marker to just keep track of which deck or which player turn it is. So this is the Witch King's deck, the red deck. I've sleeved them different colors, not because the card quality was bad. I sleeved it different colors because the backs are the same for both sides. Because in the dual modes, you just jam the decks together. And in the uh, other scenario modes, like the Fellowship of the Ring, you will combine cards from both decks. So if the backs were different, that would be a problem. So the backs are the same in both decks. And what we found pra practicing it is that we will accidentally put cards in the wrong elimination piles or the wrong cycle piles. And then when they're cycling back around, they will show up in the wrong decks and stuff. So that's just our being, being dumb. If you play this game a lot, you'll get super used to it. But... Sometimes you're just cleaning up a board full of like 10 cards and sorting them out sometimes you forget to do. So what I've done is sleeve them in different colors so it's very obvious if we put the wrong card in the wrong, like basically discard pile or dead pile, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so just keep that in mind. So we have the Witch King player over here. We have the Sormon player here. So this is Sormon's deck. Mel has... Who's Frodo. This? this is Frodo's deck. So, so she's the Frodo deck. Okay, Frodo's going to start. And then over here you have... Aragorn. Aragorn's deck. Okay, they're just named based on like the prominent character in the deck. But depending on which mode you're playing, if we were playing the two-player dual mode, it's like Gandalf versus Sauron maybe or something like that. It's because it's like based on the prominent character in the deck. Um, so they just use that when you're describing them. Um, but I am the shadow player with two shadow decks. I'm two shadow players... <laughs> You are the free people's players yes. on that side. And because the way we're sitting, it doesn't go like around in a clockwise order. It, depending on the mode you're playing, uh, it might go in a different order. Okay. So they even have on the other side here. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Oh. It's Witch King. Oh, this is for the three player duel mode. Sorry. Oh, yeah. This is for three player duel. So if you're playing three players, uh, you would have Gandalf would be controlling all the free people's cards. Play, or two, sorry. One free people's player versus it looks like two shadow players. And it kind of just goes in that order. Um, so yeah, so turn order changes. So to keep track of turn order, because it doesn't go in clockwise order, we're going to use tokens to determine who the first player is on a turn, which it starts off with Frodo. And then it just goes around on this card. There's little arrows on the card. And we have a current player turn token, which we'll use to keep track. Very helpful. It, it is very helpful, very, very helpful. needed. Very needed. Okay. Yep. At least in our experience, playing two-player in the trilogy mode. If you're playing the dual mode, all the decks would be jammed together, and we would just be playing two players, so it's like, you know, you don't need to worry about it. But again, if you're playing three players, it might not be going in the order you're sitting at the table, so you need to follow this specific turn order, okay? Um, what else we need to know? Uh, so in our unique decks, so each player is controlling a deck. In this case, we're playing two-player version instead of the four-player. So we're controlling two decks each. In the deck is full of characters, items, events, um, armies that are all from the Lord of the Rings saga. Uh, all part of the story, and they're all going to be battling along the way, trying to corrupt Frodo uh, in the Fellowship, traveling along the path to get the Ring to Mount Doom. And we're, they're going to be trying, the free peoples are going to be trying to defend their homelands. I'm going to be trying to crush them with my shadow, you know, armies and, and Nazgul and monsters and all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, during a round, we're basically just going to keep fighting over uh, the path and, and the battlegrounds in the story of, of the Lord of the Rings. Maybe not in the same order-ish. The path has a determined order. 
but the battlegrounds come out randomly um, from each side, which is kind of cool. It keeps flipping different sides because the first player token keeps going around. You'll see that. Again, if none of this makes sense, it should all make sense when we go through the full playthrough. I'm just kind of giving a quick overview. Um, and the win condition, how we win, is at the end of nine paths. So every round we resolve a path. And the path deck here, uh, if you can see on the back, has a number. And there's three of each number. So you will draw one at random to resolve a path each round. And it goes from one all the way up to nine. So you could play anywhere probably from seven to nine rounds. If you go to time, quote unquote, the end of the ninth path, and then you just check score. And if you see on these path cards, for example, they have a point value, okay? So you get points from them or battlegrounds, and it works a little different from the shadow player on paths with corruption, you'll see that. But basically, uh, at the end of nine paths resolved, which could happen in less than nine rounds, you check score, whoever's the most score wins, okay? Or there's a cool thing in the game, it's like a constant pressure of if at any time at the end of a round when you do a victory check, if someone is in the lead by 10 points over the other player, instant win, which we've seen happen in both sides. Mm -hmm. We've crushed each other. Mm -hmm. um, it's happened. Yep. We've also seen it super close and balanced getting to the end of nine. So it really depends on your strategy, depends how you use your cards and, and surprises and tricks to kind of turn things in your way. They're obviously because we're drawing from random deck, random deck, random deck, random deck, random deck, random deck, random deck. Um, there's some randomness. There's some things that could be out of your control and someone could get a little lucky with certain things coming up at the right time or having the right card in hand. But you can control all that because you can hold cards in hand turn through turn and you can kind of pull cards out of these decks that you're looking for based on card effects you have on cards. So if you're like, I need that battleground to show up now. Well, if you prepared the right card, you can pop that card to pull that battleground you need out and then attack it, you know, if, if you know what you're doing, which we don't. So, uh, yeah, so it's kind of cool. So you can, you can mess with the randomness. You can, you can pull it and, and push it in, in, if you need. Um, so it's not completely, but any kind of card game, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of, oh, damn, that one came up. Oh, shucks. Uh, so, yeah. So that's how the win condition is. Uh, the different scenarios, I've already mentioned them. We'll talk more about the different scenario versions of ways to play the game at the end of the video or the end of the stream. Uh, so set up what you see here. So to explain everything kind of on the table. So each player has their deck. I've already mentioned that. But each player has a ring token. And in the different scenarios, this ring token does different things. In this scenario, each player or deck has a ring. This ring, uh, if flipped, you can use it as an action to draw two cards. But if it's flipped, it's worth no points at the end of path nine when we total up score. But it's worth one point if it is not flipped. It doesn't get added into the score ongoing throughout the game. It only matters at the end if it gets to end of path nine. So if you feel like you're going to lose by 10 at the end of round like six, you better be flipping these things to try to stay in the game and not lose. Because it's like you won't even get to the end of the game if you don't, you know, spend them kind of thing sometimes. So these are not worth one point all the time. They're only worth one point each at the end of the game if they've not been flipped. But they can draw you two cards once in the game. Like an emergency draw two cards yes. once. But they do work completely different in the other modes of the game. Okay. Um, which we'll touch on again at the end of the video. Here we have battlefields. So these battlefields, uh, we have the shadow battlefield deck. And a battlefield has a point value on it for whoever wins the battle, gets those points towards their score. We have some defense up here uh, to help block attacks. And here are the defending factions who can even participate in the battle and defend. Here is ability that activates anytime this battle or this battleground comes into play, whether it's activated on a turn or reactivated from somebody's score pile or something, which you can fight at these battles like twice in a game, which is neat if you want to do that or not. Uh, and then down at the bottom is who can attack it. So for example, Mordor and the Southron can defend uh, Moranon, but the Dunedain, Rohan, and Wizards can attack it. But the Elves can't, the Dwarves can't, and the Hobbits can't. Unless your Hobbit lets you trick in, which I know a couple of the Hobbits do based on which faction they support kind of stuff. So that's how a battleground kind of looks, and we'll explain the battles more, but that's what this is. This is the Shadow Battleground deck, which is random. We'll shuffle again because I'll do a little demo uh, of a battle for you in a sec here. Uh, and then this is the battleground for the Free Peoples, 
which now you'll see the free people's players are defenders up here. So Dunedain and Wizard are defending Dole Amaroth. Amaroth? Amaroth? And they get a little Billy that fires off, and then the Southrons can only attack this location. Okay, for example, and these are random. You'll see them come up in the game. One gets drawn each round, but there are effects that can draw more at weird times and pull them back out of score piles and stuff. So it gets pretty wacky sometimes uh, and unexpected, which is cool. Um, and then with the path, let's just look at an example, path one. So this is a uh, bag end. Okay? It's worth one point to the free people's player if they can defend this. And this path simulates, obviously the battlegrounds simulate the battles. This simulates the fellowship's journey along the path to try to slam dunk the ring in the volcano of Mount Doom, um, you know, and, and break the glass backboard. Uh, so this is the Hobbit player draws two cards, for example, fires off, like an ability fires off, just like the battlegrounds, has a beautiful art on it, of course. And this just reminds you what path number it is. And it has a path number for progression, but it also has a path number because only certain characters can get involved in specific paths, which is neat. There's a limit to that. If the shadow player can get more corruption than is blocked and prevented by the, sh the free people's player, the shadow player can gain this and win this and earn corruption points, which is slightly different. Um, so yeah, so I'll just shuffle these in here for now. Okay, uh, and then over here we have that turn order track I've already described. We have some tokens. Uh, so this is just shows you, you can add attack points. Some cards give you abilities to add attack, um, attack points to the battle, which are blocked by defense, which can be on the location, on characters, or added through effects with these tokens. And then this is what path defense looks like, which is a different symbol. So sometimes characters can block corruption on the path with this, or they can block attacks in a battle. Okay, those are two different types of defense. Okay, and then here we have corruption. So the black is the corruption points that lead to my victory point total for winning the game. And then this is corruption points that can be added onto a battle. So same way you can add defense and attack, you can add this onto a battle at a path. Um, or combat, sorry, combat at a path, not a battle, I guess. Battles happen, or combat at battlegrounds, I guess is what I should be saying. Other than that, oh, components. The only other component we have is these reference sheets. So there's a reference sheet going over the dual scenario and some symbols and your actions. And on the other side of this reference sheet, you have the trilogy scenario that we're playing today. And you have some more definitions of symbols. So this is the factions in the game. So in Mel's two decks, she has a mix of Dunedain, Dwarfs, Elves, Hobbits, Rohan, and Wizard. So in her Frodo deck, she has Hobbits, Rohan, Wizard, and Dwarf. Dwarfs. In her Aragorn deck, she has Dunedain and, and Elf. Elf. Yeah. So on my side, I have in my Sauron deck, I have Isengard, Monstrous, and Southron. And in my uh, Witch King deck, I only have Mordor. So oh. that's how that works. But again, it changes, the mix changes based on the scenario, mode, or whatever of the game you're playing. Um, so that's kind of neat. And uh, yeah, there's your list of actions. So I guess, um, I guess I can talk about the cards. Yeah, let's talk about the cards. So um, the cards in the game. So we have armies, okay? There's an army. Okay, these can, these can go in your reserve ready to fight a battle in the future, or you can play them to a battleground, for example, because they have an attack value, or they have defense if they're defenders, okay? So anything related to a battle at a battleground is in the top part of the card, but if you'll see on characters, like Golem, he doesn't do anything in battles, but on the path, he adds corruption. So corruption, again, gets added and gets subtracted by corruption defense, and attacks at battlegrounds get subtracted by, like, combat defense kind of thing, right? And on these cards, so they're similar, but it'll even tell you it has an army. It'll remind you what faction it's from, which the faction symbol is up here. And to remind you it's an army, anyone who's played War of the Ring, the board game, will, will recognize some of this stuff. And then it has, like, abilities. So a character has usually a number here that tells you what path they can even get involved in. So Golem here, he can't get involved in the early path and mess with the Free People's player until uh, path 6 to 9, so late game. Well, that sucks if you draw this early. Or is it? So if on a path, well, he can't be on a path, so this ability doesn't matter. But if the card's eliminated in path combat, you cycle in instead, so he can come back and be annoying. And what is cycling, you say? We'll get into that in a moment. 
but even drawing cards early game and worried about randomness in the decks, this is where I'll describe how you can actually control the randomness, which was really cool and kind of set up for late game in two ways. Um, but I'll get into that. First, I just want to show you the different types of cards. So here's an item, and this is an item from Isengard. Uh, it tells you it's Isengard, and it goes on a specific person, in this case, Sormon. Sometimes it'll say it goes on an elf or a hobbit or uh, Dunedain, or it'll say like Aragorn or, you know, Elrond or whatever. So this item can only go on Sormon, and it has a little ability that can fire off while it's in reserve. In reserve is kind of just like your play area in front of you. And you can move things from your reserve to battles when you feel necessary or fire off abilities while it's in reserve. So it's just another game state that a card can be in. Um, the only other cards, I think that's all. Did I go over all of them? Events. Events, that's what I'm looking for. So we have events here. This is an event example. This is threats and promises. So an event, it's a one time in the game and it's eliminated and it's gone. Okay, it's just out. You fire this off once in a game and you'll never see it again. So this says if Sormon's in reserve, Activate or reactivate an Isengard battleground. So any battleground that has the Isengard symbol on it, for example, I can pull out of someone's score pile or pull out of the battleground deck if it's not been pulled out yet. And I can reactivate it, fire off its ability, and then get in a battle with it again. So this is how you can like time things and trick players and think they've already dealt with that battle. And then boom, more armies show up and you, you get the points. You steal the points from their score pile and stuff. Really cool, really clever, hard to pull off, but really fun. Um, it's not over till it's over kind of thing, which is really cool. So, uh, and there's a whole way to move Sormon to it because normally you can't move a character who's been played the same round. There's like summoning sickness or, you know, there's an extra turn needed before you can play something in reserve and then move it to a battleground. So, but you can play things directly to battlegrounds and paths, but there are tricks where you can play a card into your reserve and it's, it's sleeping, you know, it's delayed for a turn, but then you have tricks like this you can play. Or, or even some items you can play on things to trick them into the battle and trick the other player. Uh, they thought they were kind of good and you can mess with them. But this is an event um, which leaves the game uh, once it's played. And I think that's all the card types, right? Yep. So characters, armies, items, and events. Yes. Okay. And they're all things you recognize. There's freaking bows and horses and knives and the items. There's cool events from the story. There's all the main characters you can think of. All the armies from the different factions you can think of, they're all in here. Um, really fun. You like Lord of the Rings, it's, it's all here. You'll hear lots of terms and things that you'd hear if you're playing War of the Ring, the board game, or Lord of the Rings, the card game, and that kind of stuff. Oh, I'm going to apologize now if I say any of the names incorrectly. Yeah, yeah. I don't know them either. I don't know the pronunciation. Uh, <laughs> so, what we'll do, um, let's see, anything else? I guess we can go over the flow of a round before we get into it here. Obviously, we'll show it. As we play the game, it'll make more sense. But just to understand what we're doing, um, so you know how the game works, is on the round, the round's going to go, obviously, in turn order here. And on your turn, you can do these actions here. So it starts first uh, with the turn order, then the location step. So every round, we're going to pull out a path and a battleground based on the start player. So if Mel's the starting player on that one, she pulls from the blue deck here. If I'm the starting player, I pull from the shadow deck down here. Then we take actions going around the table, taking one action each to do all these kind of things, like play a card from your hand, move one character or army from your reserve, cycle a card, which I'll explain, winnow, where you can eliminate two cards from the game. They're completely gone just to draw a card if you're desperate. Use an action on a card or use a ring token like I described to draw two cards. And instead of taking an action, you can pass, but you can only pass if you have less cards in your hand than someone than the other team. I think, what is it? Number of cards in your hand is equal then or less than your carryover limit, which default in this mode is two. So you can hold two cards to carry over to the next turn. And you don't draw up to a hand size. You actually just keep drawing additional cards. So you can hold like two cards and then draw into like four, for example, and have a bigger turn the next turn if you're not really wanting to commit this turn. But there are cards that let you improve your carryover limit so you can build up to really big, cool turns if you want. Or if the number of your cards in your hand is less than each enemy player. So if I, if I have three cards in, in four cards in both my hands, if Mel's down to like two, she can keep passing and you can keep passing, but you can still go again if not everyone's passed. So once every, all four players or all four decks or all four characters have successfully passed, uh, consecutively passed, sorry, then you move on and, and to the next step, um, which the next step is combat, which you resolve all the combats on the board. Then you do the victory check to see if anyone is winning by 10. 
Uh, if no one's up by 10 over the other player, then it still goes on. Then you draw up. So for example, in this mode, Trilogy, the free people player will each draw three cards and the shadow player draws four. And then the start player token is passed to the next player. Okay, and then it explains the ring token there. Okay, so it just keeps going around like that. And uh, I guess we should just probably play the first round rather than me show an example of combats and stuff. Yeah, we can just it's play. It's probably better to just do it and play it because we'll see it almost like right away and the first round just starts off. Um, and yeah, that's it. So let's shuffle up. And yeah, we'll get into a full play. Let's see if any questions in the chat that, uh, that you have that can't be answered playing. I'll, again, I'll get into the other modes at the end of the video for those who are asking about them. Oh yeah, did I close a poll? You did, did not. not. I did not close that poll that I asked earlier. So let's see, out of the people watching and who voted in the live chat, 76% plan to play this game at two players. Okay, interesting. 15% only plan to play it at the full four player count it was designed for, and the main version was designed for, and only 7% will play it at three player. Interesting. Yeah, I figured. It's post-COVID, man. Low player counts yeah. is where it's at. It's where okay. the world is gone. But it is fully playable at two, which we're going to show you. This is the main mode that obviously was designed for four players, but you can play it at two and three, no problem. And you'll obviously get better at it as you go. And I'm not a fan of playing two-handed, I'll be honest, but I still have fun playing this mode. Um, it's totally fine. But there is, again, two, there are other scenarios to play that are, are more geared towards the lower player counts, which we can do later in different streams if you guys are interested. Um, yeah, so we'll talk about that later. So yeah, if I pulled everyone ahead of time, we would definitely just play the two-player duel today. Probably would have been the best way, or the Fellowship of the Ring scenario to just show it off. I thought that would have been the best mode, probably. But I didn't know if, like, this game is, like, I, I didn't know if the four-player was, like, a popular thing for it. I'm not sure, but. Uh, Darren is saying, how many games have we played? Uh, we probably played about five, right? Five, I think. This will be, like, six, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And one of those was at Gen Con. Yeah. So there are 30 cards in each deck, right? Yes. Uh, 30 cards in each deck, but if you're playing like the dual modes, you just jam them together. So you're playing like 60 card decks, which is more akin to most competitive card games and stuff. Um, but there's lots of draw effects and cycling effects, and you saw the winnow and the, the token to draw more cards and stuff. So there are ways to get through the decks if you need to, um, which is cool. All right. So that one's shuffled. You want to shuffle these uh, two battleground decks quickly? Mm -hmm. I guess just to note, when you showed these off, you didn't mention that um, you can look at the piles that are off to the side. Are you loud? For sure. I know you can look at score piles and discard piles and stuff. Oh, maybe you're not then. I don't know. Oh, I can I'm tell sorry. You, though. We do. We because do we because don't we don't them. know them. But I thought you could. There is a. a and then just reshuffle I'll them. We'll find out right now. I know exactly where it is. And I love the art they picked for this. So on the right hand side of this page in the rule book, <laughs> you see the tower here. Who can see what? <laughs> you must always allow other players to examine a card when some aspect of the face of the card is being referenced, such as when a specific card is taken from your draw deck. You may inspect your own cycle pile and eliminated pile, which I'll show you in a sec. Oh yeah, I didn't explain cycling and stuff, uh, which I wanted to show was kind of cool. I mean, I'll do that in a sec. Um, which is helpful if determining a particular card is in your draw deck. You may always inspect face-up cards in play. You may not show any other players your hand. Conversations between teammates must take place at the table in public. You may talk to your teammate about what cards you have, but that means the other team will also know, because they're always watching. Oh, so maybe you can't, but we always have played where you can, and we just shuffle this back up after you look at it. Yeah, we'll do it because we don't have all the locations memorized. It's like really impossible to remember all the symbols on locations, if they've come up or not, without looking through all the piles over and over again. So we just kind of peek and then we shuffle again. Um, but yeah, you, you play it how you want. Um, but it doesn't really say there, so True. Okay, whatever. Sorry. No big deal. But we can do it. It's oh, fine. That's how we play. We're so. just demoing it. It's all good. Okay. There's no money on the line here. There's, it's not part of a tournament yet. So uh, we don't have to worry. So one thing I want to show is um, the deck and elimination pile and cycle piles. So, for example, the Mordor player down here, uh, this one, 
Okay, Mordor player's deck down here, okay? Uh, I have my deck. I will draw a hand, okay? Let's say I have a hand of cards. While I'm playing the game, so it's kind of like picture Marvel Champions or any game with like dual use cards. Um, what other game? Flesh and Blood. There's so many other games where you have to spend cards to play other cards. So in this game, to play a card, so if I put a card in reserve or put it at the battlefield, I have to cycle a card to play that card every time. So I will take one of my cards and I cycle it and I put it to the right of my deck in a cycle pile, okay? So to the right of my deck, uh, uh, 90 degree turned little cycle pile here, face down. These cards will eventually get shuffled back into my deck. Think of this as like a discard pile. But on the other side of the deck, we have an eliminated pile, which cards that get forsaken or eliminated go to that pile. And it's like a dead pile, which we've seen in other games, right? Or a banished zone or whatever, where they're completely out of the game, never to be seen again, okay? So I could play that card by cycling a card, okay? I could play an event. Let's say I play, let's say this was an event. I don't have one in hand, but let's say this was an event. I would have to cycle a card to play that event. I fire off that event and do whatever it says. And then when I'm done resolving it, it goes into my eliminated pile on this side. Now, when we were learning the game at Gen Con, I was super confused by this. And I was like, I would just put a corruption token to remind me, don't touch this pile, Rob. I can look at it at any time. And you need to look at it if you ever forsake a card off the top of your deck or something, because some cards that get forsaken have abilities that bring them back into play if they're forsaken off the top of your deck or forsaken out of um, the reserve area and stuff like that. Do you have to check the cards? And you can look through here to see if you, oh, that guy's already dead. Okay, I might as well not search for him or look for him. Um, I don't plan on seeing them again. So this pile is completely gone from the game. This pile is cycled. So once I have had my, like later in the game, I have some stuff in reserve. You know, let's say these are all in reserve. This is attached to somebody. This is totally illegal, but... So let's say this is my reserve in front of me, not stuff that's at the battle. I've run out of my deck. As soon as I run out of my deck, I take my cycle pile and I shuffle it. So again, you're paying for cards to play with cards that you're cycling. So you're kind of planning the future of the game and making decisions to fire off events and cycle things. There's all these events or these um, abilities in the game that you can eliminate a card to do this. That means that card is gone. And that card could have been used to attack. That card could have been used to do some cool ability that's also on the card. So the, all the cards are like multi-use. They can be used to fight at paths. Some of them can fight at battlegrounds or, or one or the other. Some can be attached to things. Some can be eliminated to do cool effects to mess with the other player or to help you draw cards or stuff like that. So you shuffle it back up. Your cycle pile creates a new deck. Why is that card upside down? Uh, to create a new deck. And you just keep drawing and keep playing from that. And then you will play cards and cycle cards to play cards. And you'll just keep doing that until eventually you loop around. And as you keep playing, you're eliminating cards and your deck is getting smaller and more refined. So hopefully you're paying for cards, the cards you want to see later in the game that aren't useful to you. And most cards that are needed early in the game that are useful early game, if you see them late game, they usually have effects that let you eliminate them to still do something cool. So they're not completely useless. So this has that puzzly aspect that I love. You guys hear me ramble on about how I love it in like, oh, upside down cards. Um, <laughs> how I ramble about it in uh, like Marvel Champions and Mage Knight and all this, where you can use cards for different things and you're paying for cards with other cards. So cards are multi-use. They are a resource. They have specific timing to get powerful effects of them. And when you're looking at a hand of cards, you have to make that puzzly choice of what do I need to play? What's important right now? What am I stalling to play later? What will I store in my cycle pile? What should I put in reserve? What should I put on the battlefield? Should this guy go to a battlefield, a path or reserve or be cycled? You are trying to puzzle out with all these decision points every single time you look at your hand on your turn to perform one action, okay? So if you're into that kind of stuff, this game has that. And spoiler alert, I really like that stuff in games, if you didn't know. Okay. Uh, so we so, don't know a release date or price point on this yet, right? Have I they thought mentioned? I could be totally wrong, but I swear I read somewhere that this is supposed to launch at Essen. I think they were saying that at Gen Con, I think. But then again, there was also like 600 games being discussed <laughs> at Gen Con, and I might be confusing that with another one. But supposedly it's later this year. I don't think it says it on my little letter that tells me how amazing I am. Because <laughs> that's all it says in here, basically, right? <laughs> yeah. No, that is not here. 
But after we play it, maybe they hear my ramblings and rants and stuff and, and your rants and stuff in the chat. And maybe they totally say, all right, back to the drawing board. We definitely need more time to change the game. I don't know. Dan says December 30th, 2022. Dan, are you making that up? or That's, do you... that's placeholder for sure. Yeah, I'm assuming later this year, but maybe not. Maybe it's like spring next year. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Oh, Bram says release November 2022. I swear they're. I thought I heard November as well. Which as is when date. Essen like, is. Yeah. And I thought they were going to bring copies to Essen to like sell early there or whatever. Or like that's the launch. But I but could maybe, be wrong. Yeah, maybe, maybe December is North America. Yeah. If anyone from Aries Games is watching this later, comment down below and let us know in the comments. And, oh, uh, Dan got that from the website. Oh, it says, okay. Okay, on the website? Okay. Awesome. Cool. I, don't, I haven't heard a price point that Yogi, yet. No. Yogi says 2022. Okay, so we'll just go by that information you guys are seeing on the website. So sometime in 2022. Yeah, quarter four 2022, <laughs> we'll just say. But again, things can change, of course. Okay. All right, I guess we can, whatever. Okay, um, so to start, each player is going to draw seven in this mode, uh, this scenario. Each player is going to draw seven cards. Look at those seven cards and then cycle two. So this is kind of like your mulligan, but you're not doing a mulligan. It's just take two cards you don't want to see right now and dump them. And again, we're not here to show you huge strategy or anything. We're just going to show you the game, how it works, and kind of describe some stuff. We can talk about strategy and stuff at the end, maybe. Um, hmm. I didn't draw enough. I didn't draw enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Derp. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was like, wait, I'm down to five already. I've only cycled one. I don't know. I don't know either. On that one. No, it's no chance to last here. Oh, Kevin pre ordered from his uh, friendly local game store. It said November, December, and it was 32 US dollars. Nice. Nice. Thanks, Kevin. Cool, cool. Appreciate the info. Probably should have asked this stuff from the publisher before I play the game, but. <laughs> okay, uh, let me just check this player. Okay, get rid of this one. And. I don't know. No. Brian S does say there is definitely some AP in this game, and I agree. Uh, there for sure can be. There Again, can be, yeah. I, like I've said, we've played this five times, and every time I play, I'm trying different strategies. There's so much cool strategy to it. It's really deep. And every time you play it, again, some of the randomness of when paths things happen, and they happen different every time you play, like, we might not see certain paths in a playthrough that we'll see completely different ones in the next one, and different effects fire off, different point values are there, and you kind of value things different, and at those times, even if you're seeing the same stuff in a game, you'll have different cards in hand, different cards in your reserve, different cards you've cycled already, you're betting on seeing this card, there's like definitely deep strategy to this, and we still have not mastered this game, I'm not even going to try to master it, A, it's a demo, so I don't know if it's going to change that much and stuff. Um, but when we get the final copy, I definitely will be more into like trying to figure it out. But right now I'm like just having fun, trying different things every time we play. I'm still in that 
that mode of like, oh, okay. And I'm seeing Mel use different characters, different attachments I've never seen the brass time we played and stuff like that. So yeah, it's the, like experimenting, right? Yeah. Of how different strategies will yeah. work. And sometimes you have things early you need, and sometimes you don't, and you got to make other things work. Really fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're good there. Um, and then uh, first player is Frodo. So we're going to get a random battleground. And this is going to fire off uh, this ability. So we're starting the game off at Rivendell. We're going to have a battle. The elf player right now draws one card and then cycles one card from hand. The okay. only faction that I have that can attack this is monsters can only fight here. And there's already predetermined two defense here. And the only, only other characters or armies that can add defense to this are elves and wizards. Okay. Okay, and I'll face that towards you because you are defending it. So I will draw one card. And if Mel successfully defends it and how she defends it, you'll see kind of how it works, but... Basically, if the attacker has more swords in the combat, she has to eliminate players to cancel out swords. And if there's still swords there, I win and get the two points. If she successfully blocks all the swords and, or has more defense than swords, she will take the points. Um, and that goes to her score pile. Again, you can reactivate battlefields and things from score piles and stuff. So even though she might get this, I could maybe reactivate it in the future and bring it back into play and fight for it again, which is kind of cool. So I've, I've drawn a card and I've cycled a card from hand. Okay, so then uh, we're going to do a path. So if you just want to tell me which one at random mm -hmm. here. Okay, I'll just put these over here out of the way. So this is the random of three path ones we're going to see here. Oh, it's back oh, again, it's again with one. my example I shown. So this one's worth one point to the sh uh, free people's player. Uh, it's back again. Right now the Hobbit player draws two cards and it's a path one. Okay, so the Hobbit player is this deck. Draws two cards. Okie dokie. All right. Uh, okay. Okay, so now I think I can just start as Frodo. Is that yes. all, anything else you want to explain before I go ahead? I don't think so. If I miss okay. anything, you let me know. Just looking at who can do what here. According to this, Frodo's going now. The next will be the Witch King player. So I should probably start looking at my hand and thinking what I'm going to do on my turn. Okay, I'm going to cycle a card and I'm going to play Gimli. Do you want to show a card? That, well, how did you want to do Yeah, that? we're going to show a few to start. So okay. Mel's playing Gimli. And I'm playing Gimli to my reserve. So it, Gimli can get involved on paths at three to nine paths. So he can't go to the path right now to try to block corruption. But he can get involved in combats where dwarves are allowed, which is not the current battlefield. So she is just putting him into play to prepare for later. But it says when you play, uh, when played, you may take Dwarven Axe from your cycle pile into hand. Well, conveniently, conveniently no enough, got already. You... I paid for Gimli with the Dwarven Axe. All right, well, this was all just a practice setup, so we're going to totally <laughs> shuffle all over and start again, because that is crap. <laughs> I'm just joking. So Mel is just putting cards in reserve. So even though I talked about random deck, random deck, random deck, She's already setting up for battles later, which is part of the fun. So you can just keep playing cards in reserve. But again, the cool part is if she just keeps preparing things in reserve and not getting involved in fights and worrying about what's going on, slowly I could creep up to being in the lead by 10 at the end of a round and win. So there's this balance of like putting things in reserve and when to use them at the right time, which is really fun and really uh, intriguing to me. The other thing about putting things in reserve is the other player can see what's there. True. So they can kind of plan accordingly knowing they could put that into the battle or they don't have anything here in the battle and they don't have any cards in their hand. So maybe I would be able to win something. So um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Interesting. I don't usually have that set up like that. So that was lucky. Okay, I am going to cycle a card, and I'm going to play the Black Easterling, who is a Nazgul. He's got the Nazgul trait. He has, adds plus one defense on Dol Guldur, which is not the battlefield we're playing at, but when played, I draw a card. But I'm putting in my reserve. Uh, another thing I want to touch on is... Oh, we got a super chat. Matthew, thank you so much. Hello, my friend. Matthew, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the you. support, Matthew. Hello. Much appreciated. Uh, so this says, this guy can be involved in path 1 to 3, uh, or 5 to 9, and if he goes into a combat on a battlefield where Mordor guys are allowed, these little ones with the circles around him, I didn't show these yet, but these only apply if he has an army to support him. So he would have to have another army. Uh, for example, I just cycled this one, I'll just show it. 
So this Mordor army can pair with him and he'll get this as a leadership bonus. If this guy is at a battle by himself, he's adding nothing except for at Dol Guldur, he's adding one shield. So he's great for defending Dol Guldur. But if he goes on attack or defense and has an army with him, he could gain support from that army and be a leader to that army and add an extra sword or on defense, add an extra shield. So that's how that works. So I'm just putting in my reserve and when played, I'm going to draw a card. Yes. Okay. Go. Was that a oh, fake? Yes. That was here. Aragorn's turn. Let's carry on. <laughs> I was upset in my draw. I really kind of drew crappy starts um, compared to how the last couple games have gone. Okay. So I'm I'm like going to be digging for things, which is annoying. But so that uh, was just your... that was one of them, which That's is good. So I feel like I haven't completely been in trouble, but we'll see. Okay. We'll cycle a card. And we'll play Elrond, who is going to my reserve. And when played, I may draw a card. And while in reserve, increase your carryover limit by one. So, I don't know if so, you want to show so that Mel one. can now carry over. Mel can carry over with her uh, Aragorn player, can now hold three cards at the end of a round and still pass. And keep passing with three cards in hand. And even save those three cards for the next round when she draws three more and start the next round with six in hand. So that's kind of sucky for me. Um, and Elrond's a monster. This guy obviously can add to combats on offense or defense. If he's supporting an army, he adds even more. And on path combat, but only, only on path three, this guy can get involved. And I'm sure anyone who knows the books, the movies, the story, uh, there's a theme to all this. The designer was explaining it. Like, uh, again, I don't remember exactly who was at what battle, which character showed up in the books and all that. I haven't read all the books, I'll be honest. I've started the first book probably six times in the last 10 years and just never <laughs> finished it. I always put it down for months and then get it back. I'm like, no, I'll just start over again. And I've just been in that loop forever. But uh, supposedly based on where path three is and the locations there, it makes sense why Elrond can only go there and never later based on the story. Supposedly a lot of that is really lined up in this game, which is cool. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, all right. So now it's uh, Sauron. Hmm. I'll cycle a card. I will play the flocks of Creebane on the path. So they'll add one corruption. It says if on a path, you may use your action to activate a different path. Oh, I should not be doing this now. Oops. Oopsies. I should not be doing this now. Uh, I just realized all these paths give you cool abilities. Sure, give me some abilities. I should not be doing that on this one. But it would resolve the path that's currently there and draw a new path. Um, so I just kind of showed my cards, literally. <laughs> but I just realized, I just remembered it's like, no, no, no. Don't, don't be sneaky there. I don't think so. Um, but let me instead. Mm. So many cards still. Yeah, because I was able to draw cards on both decks. <clears throat> Sucks. Like I want to play stuff to these, but then I'm worried Mel still has so many cards in hand. She'll just slap down things to stop me. So it's like, I don't want to waste those, right? I want to save them for better, better times where it's like more known information. So let me. The cycle. Oh, it did. Sorry, Darren. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It goes in my hand. It goes in my hand. The what? axe. Sorry. It goes to my hand, not attached to him. I apologize. I'm so sorry. So sorry. Oh, Mel's cheating. So yeah. I automatically win. Thanks no, for watching, everybody. No, no. Bye. Sorry, my bad. Call the judge. I don't even know why I did that because I knew that wasn't where that was. So went. many games do that, though. Yeah, where they in go, my head, I just, yeah. I apologize. I'm so sorry. When played, you may take Dwarven Axe to your, from your cycle pile to your into your hand. Yes, it is in my hand now. How thank dare you, Darren. you? Thank How you, thank dare you. Luckily, you put that up because I, yeah, almost cheated. 
I'm showing my cards. Darren, I told you to let me know that stuff at the end of the game when I lose, <laughs> so then I can disqualify her and instantly win. Darren, come on. Sorry, I knew that too. Come on, Darren. Okay, so I just played this army to my reserve. Next is Frodo. Well. No, Dan, Kyle is rubbing off on Mel. Not me, okay? I never play anything wrong or cheat, <laughs> all right? That was a total mistake. I so apologize. Okay, I'm going to play Pippin to the path. No! So Pippin, um, he may be played or moved to a Dunedain battleground and supported by a Dunedain army, but we're not worrying about that. And if eliminated in path combat, cycle this card instead along with any wielded items. So instead of... So uh, on, on this, the reason why it says maybe played or moved to a Dunedain battleground, again, a Dunedain battleground would be any battleground that has the Dunedain symbol on it, attacking or defending. So this is not a Dunedain battleground. Right. So obviously, obviously that's not the case. Um, but if eliminated on path, you can cycle it instead. So she's putting it on path one, which is legal, because he can go on path one to nine. And he's defending for one, which there's no corruption there yet. Um, so you'd still automatically get it, but she's already putting that there to say, stay away. Oh, super chat. Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. Don't reward her for cheating, okay? <laughs> Matthew, stop. Matthew, thank you so much. <laughs> You're reinforcing bad behavior, Matthew. Bad behavior. Oh, thank no. you for the donation, though. Much Matthew, appreciated. thank you, thank you. <laughs> cool of a toque. All right. So, I'm putting him here because even if Rob did put some corruption, he's not going to die. He'll just get cycled back. So, Which is annoying. Yeah. Stupid hobbits. <laughs> uh, okay, so now we're on to the Witch King player. Which I will. Hmm. I'm going to cycle to play the Witch King. And you'll see why he's so awesome. He can attack for heavy attack. He can go to like almost every path except for four. He brings two corruption. If he goes on a path, he's an Azgul. But while in reserve, I draw one additional card each draw step, which is huge. If forsaken from the top of my deck, you cycle it instead of eliminating it. So that kind of keeps him. In play. So I'm going to put this guy into play exhausted so he'll get me an extra card draw at the end of the round. Okay, now we go to Aragorn. Okay, I will cycle a card. I'm going to play an item that needs to go on. Oh, oh sorry, on Elrond, which I have in play here. This is the Ring of Air or Vilia. Vilia? So if in reserve, you may... Oh, sorry. Yeah, it does say it goes on... Stupid green screen. It does say it goes right on Elrond. Right there, you see item Elrond. So there you go. Okay, and it says, if in reserve, you may use your action and cycle this card, so each free people player draws one card. So I can use my action to do that at a time I, I need cards. And go Gross. Storm on... Okay. Hmm. I think I'm going to oh, cycle. And I'll play the Bullrog of Moria into my reserve. Hey, Frodo. He could have went and fought at this combat, but he only brings two swords, and those two swords would be blocked by two shields, so I would need more swords, which I may or may not have in hand, but Mel is still holding definitely cards in her wizard deck, and definitely cards in her elf deck, which easily she could come in and start dropping more defenders. Of course, some of those defenders would die to eat up those swords, so there's this risk of, I could put them there and still lose the battle, but I could kill some of her defenders, but if she defends enough, and even extra, she might be able to save some of those important characters. Because she only has to block swords, and any, any defender that blocks swords dies. Except for they have text that gets around that, which is super annoying. Uh, which Mel has tons of. 
But uh, he's not bitter about that bitter at all. all. It's so annoying. <laughs> Can't kill these damn hobbits. But, I mean, uh, that's the matter now, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I will. Now, now, I wish there was a Game of Thrones version of this game, because then, like, you'd play your characters and they would just, like, die out of your reserve pile for no reason uh, uh, all the time, which would be cool. <laughs> but, Maybe. Uh, <laughs> just going to attach the Dwarven Axe now to Gimli. Oh, yeah. I knew that was a card. All right. Uh, this guy. All right. I'm going to cycle a card. I'm going to play this event. Oh, no. The ring wraiths are abroad. So I'm going to draw seven cards from those cards. I'm going to eliminate one to play up to two Nazgul's and cycle the rest. So this will go to my eliminated pile. We're going to draw seven cards. Okay. Six, seven. Okay. Let's see. Do I even get enough Nazgul's? Because sometimes this misses. Oh my god. Did it really just miss completely? <gasps> yeah. Oh, this is my my game. Yeah, so honestly, <laughs> missing something like this, uh, yeah, I probably just lost the game, but uh, hopefully not. I can come back from it. Well, it also, means all your Nazgul's are still in your deck. Yeah, but the problem is then now I just dumped some cards on top of my deck, which might be some important cards that I just passed by to. And yeah, it was risky. It was risky, I guess. Um, I don't know the count of Nazgul's in my deck, and obviously I've seen a couple already, so maybe I shouldn't have done this. I don't know. But uh, again, new player mistake maybe, but it is annoying that it whiffs and it's like a one-time event in my whole deck and it's gone and I could have used that card for a resource to play another card or something, but, um, but I have to eliminate a card, I think still. Yeah, eliminate one card. So I'm literally like, I lose that event, I eliminate a card and I get to play nothing. And there's no benefit. Yeah, it's kind of, that's a harsh, that's, that's kind of really harsh. Because, yeah, I can't see any of these having the Nazgul trait. I have a bunch of Nazgul attachments, but they don't have the Nazgul trait. Yeah, and it says two Nazgul characters. Whoops. Okay, well... Hmm. Mm. That's sad. All right, Aragorn. I'm going to play Arwen. Uh, when played, draw one card. And then while in reserve, add one defense and one path defense to Strider or Aragorn. Okay, Sormon will pass. Uh, Frodo. Right there. Frodo will pass. Okay. Uh... Which king will pass? Aragorn will pass. Aragorn will pass. So that ends the round. Uh, now we are going to resolve combats. The players who's the start player gets to determine the order they resolve. Not that I don't think it matters in this case at all, but... Uh, we'll just resolve this one so first. So you obviously get this because you successfully defended it. It just goes to the defender, I believe. Um, so you get two points. Okay. And then over here, uh, I have zero corruption, so you don't have to eliminate anyone to deal with the corruption. So anyone who defends cycled. gets cycled. And then you get this for one point. So Mel's up by three. Oh no! Okay. Uh, then we do a uh, victory check. So is anyone up by ten points? If so, they win. Nope, Mel's only up by three. And then we go to the draw step. So each free Papals player draws three cards. We're all within our carryover limit, right? Yep. Both have two and one. And then I draw four cards on each side. But I will actually draw five here because of the Witch King. Giving me an extra card draw bonus. And now the new player will switch to the Witch King. Oh, and that means I need to reveal a Shadow Battleground. So this one says each shadow player draws a card. It looks like the defenders are the Southron. It's only worth one point. And Dunedain and Elves can attack this. Okay. And then for the path, we get randomly the Inn of the Prancing Pony. Each shadow player draws two cards. So I should have drawn those other cards, but I'll draw. I'll just draw three on each deck. Uh, it's worth two points. It has one defense against one corruption, which is annoying. Nice. That sucks for me. 
Okay, so I draw one, two, three, and one, two, three. All right, so starting off with the Witch King player. Okay, let's see here. Okay, I'm going to cycle and I'm going to play uh, the Lidless Eye, which obviously can't be involved until path nine. But the cool part is this one bumps up my carryover limit. And when played, uh, each shadow player draws a card. This card cannot be played or moved to a path if a shadow battleground is active. And again, this is a shadow background because the shadow player is the defender on it. So uh, each shadow player will draw a card. Okay, next is Aragorn. Oh yeah, I didn't ready up my guys. They are all, uh, the, yeah, these two are ready. These two are ready. And these now, now that they're ready, these can be moved to battlegrounds if they're eligible. Like this guy now can defend here. Uh, this guy can't get involved on attacks or the path. Um, but yeah, these guys can't be moved to this battlefield. But they do have corruption, and they can go to path 1 to 3 or 5 to 9. So they still could go to this path. So they're a threat right now to you here, possibly. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll cycle one. I'll play Farmir. Uh, when played or moved to path 7, you may activate a different path 7. So he's just ready for later. Mm -hmm. Or if he goes to like Dunedain combat. Like he could get yes. involved in a Dunedain fight with the leadership bonus on attack or just a straight block. If you want. It says when played, but I don't think I can... When played or moved to path 7. Oh yeah, because so there's no comma. So if you play no it on comma. path 7 or move, move it, to it to path, path 7. seven. Yep. Yep. Sorry, no comma there. Okay. Let's... Yeah, let's get the party started. I'm going to cycle to play this little unknown dude. Thoramon. While in reserve, draw one additional card during each draw step. If forsaken from the top of your deck, just cycle instead of eliminate it. You can go get involved and get sticky on paths 5 to 6. But in Isengard battles, he can go in for some defense or some attack. And if he's supported by an army, he could get an additional symbol of each. There you go. Sormon is in play. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't move that. And move it to Proto. Yep. Okay. Proto will go to the path. If eliminated, eliminated for any reason, including being forsaken, cycle this card instead. This does not apply to wielded items. Proto cannot be eliminated. Mm hmm Okay. I'll cycle and I'll play the Mouth of Sauron. This card can be made played or moved to a path if the shadow background is battleground is active. While in reserve, draw one additional card during each draw step. Okay. So next is Aragorn. Pass. I have two cards. Two cards, okay. So, Sormon.
Okay. Uh, let's cycle to play Sormon Staff. This will attach to Sormon, and it gives him some extra icons on all, all fronts. It's a weapon while in play, it increases my carryover limit by one. Okay. All right, next is Frodo. Frodo has three cards, but both of your guys have way more than that, so I'm going to pass. Okay. Uh, this is this guy. Cycle a card, I'll put the Hunter into play. And the Hunter, while in reserve, I may use your action to cycle a card and add a corruption to the active path. So he's just in play, chilling. And even though he's exhausted, I could still fire off that ability. Uh, it's just when he's exhausted, it just means that turn he can't actually go get involved. But I can fire off abilities, no problem, to cycle him and do stuff, which is kind of fun. Uh, next is Aragorn. Aragorn will pass with two cards. Ormon. The path three, she can't go anywhere. Path three, okay. So let's. Cycle. And we'll play. Oh, Matthew. Oh, Matthew. Thank you. <laughs> Matthew, thanks for the super chat. I'm hashtag Mel F Rob. <laughs> Matthew, thank you so, so much. <laughs> Matthew, thank you, and F you too, buddy. <laughs> Matthew, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> to you. <laughs> well, the donations as well is very, very generous. Thank you. <laughs> Wait till I start using my Palantir, Matthew, to see your future and mess with you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, so while in reserve, once per round, you may use your action to examine the top cards of your draw, three top cards of your draw deck. From those, eliminate one, cycle one, then take the remaining one card to hand. Uh, so next is Frodo. You have, sorry, how many cards? He has three. Three and three. Oh, so I have to play. Yes. Do something, please. I'll just play Treebeard. Um, he gets... Uh, oh, yeah, I guess it's fine. Uh, he gets plus one uh, attack on Orthonk. And when played or moved to a battleground, the Isengard player must eliminate one Isengard army on the battleground. On that battleground. But mm -hmm. there is none. So, yeah. Yep, yep. That sucks. Okay. Um, next is the Witch King. Um... Bob, I do have that power as well. I just don't use it. I'm going to cycle this to add a corruption to the current path. Okay, next, Aragorn, go ahead. Oops. Okay, I'm going to lose use Lembas, which yep. can go on a hobbit. And uh, it says, if on a path, the Hobbit player may use an action and eliminate this card to remove one corruption for each Hobbit character on that path. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I'm in a pickle, because if I put corruption in your action, you remove one, which will get blocked by the path. So I'm, I'm like trying to get enough corruption here to 
kill Frodo so he, he cycles. Now that I see you play an attachment, I want to eliminate that attachment. But I won't win the path, so it's like kind of silly to keep going in on it since she's put so much defense to it. Um, I guess I'll just keep biding my time. I think, I don't know. So weird. Yeah. Hmm. And then I'm also thinking, like, it's path two here. I wanted to kind of get some corruption and stop you from taking two points before your three path guy and your other three to nine path guys are able to just come in and start crushing me on future paths. So I don't know what to do here. And then this guy cycles around and he can come back and still interact on multiple paths throughout the game. So it's like you got a really good start over there. I, I don't know if I should even keep investing here, but before I know it, you'll get to 10 points and I'll lose. So I have to do something, but I don't know. This is very, very frustrating. Uh, let me let me th think if I can come through on this one. Um, we are in this guy's turn. I can pass because I'm at my carryover limit. And you just did that, so... But then you could get around and pass, but I have one more. It's this guy's turn. Hold on. Hmm... Hmm. Oh, what should I do? What should I do? Maybe YOLO? Hmm. Yeah, maybe I just hold off. Yeah, I will just play the hill troll to reserve. I think, and then Frodo, go ahead. Frodo will pass. This guy is clear over limit three. So let me. Yeah, I think I'll pass with this guy. Okay. Aragorn will pass. Okay. Uh, I'll pass here. Okay, that was everyone. Okay, so now let's resolve. So I'll just get this one. So I get one point. Woo! And then this one, uh, you didn't do this action, so this gets just eaten up by the battlefield. So these, I think, both get cycled, I'm pretty sure. They sure do. Can I read that one? Yeah. Yeah, I think it just gets cycled. This is this is the situations where I put the wrong cards in the wrong decks, like when yeah, uh, yeah. a different card is attached from the other deck. Thematically, so. it's so cool that uh, you know elves are supporting the other yes. other players. So it's fun when you have the separate players all like you know when you know what you're doing and they're like well, this was happening at Gen Con too when we're like asking for help from each other and stuff. Like, do you have anything that can help me, please? Um. So yeah. All right. So. Uh, let's see. So now we draw up. Uh, so over here I'm drawing. I have plus two draw, so I get six on this side. Six, that empties me out on this side, so wow. automatically we need to cycle. Okay. And then on this side I get to draw. I have a plus one draw. So I get one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Sorry, I just moved this, which might have been. So too first soon. player is Aragorn. Yep. No victory. No one has victory. You're only up by four. Mm hmm And then uh yeah. Aragorn. Go ahead. What do we get for battlefield? Endoros. Oh no. 
So it has one defense already. It's annoying. It's only with one victory point. The only guys that can get involved on my side are the Isengard. Helm's Deep must also be activated if it's in the pre people's battleground deck. Is I believe it still it in is. your battleground deck? It sure is. So Helm's Deep also gets pulled out. It's worth two, and it looks like Wizards and Rohan are defending it. Already has two built-in defense. Now the Rohan player gets to draw five cards from those cards. So put your hand down and you draw mm -hmm. five separate cards. You can play one army character on Helm's Deep, then cycle the rest. Okay, give me one second. So if you notice, I have not really prepped any Isengard armies or anything, which is kind of annoying that this comes up. This happens often. I It's a gamble. I never know when this is going to happen, if at all. I've seen games where this doesn't even happen, and it's they're still in there. And then cycle the rest. Uh, and we're on path three. Yes. Which path would you like? Middle one. Middle one. Okay, what do we get? Imladris, the elf player, draws two cards. Elf player is this one. One, two. Okay. Oh, and I'm going here. So if you were to get all these, one, two, three, four points, you'd be at nine, I'd be at one, you're up by eight. That's scary. That is scary. But again, I'm the attacker, so it's extra hard for me unless you happen to not have defenders, but I already see you do in a wizard, a big tree beard here, who is like built for these fights. So he will smoke one of my armies, which sucks. Super thematic though. Uh, and it's right. path three and you have path three boss over here. Path three boss over here. Oh just no. playing a soldier. It's a scary. I don't know where to put that, but I'll just put it there. You played a soldier on that side? Played a soldier. Sormon. Look at this hand. I have to get serious. I have to get serious. Oh, Darren has money on you. You gotta, you gotta pull it out. Uh, for Darren, him. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I've played enough of this game to, to know when, like, uh, one player has a really good start and one player has a bad start. But ho I still can get into it if, if things... It depends, like, what she does and if she makes some mistakes, maybe, but I'm more likely to make mistakes. Uh, See how you get, like, free defense here, and then you're already showing defense, and it's like, uh, I don't want to, like, put in things too early, but... Cycle. I'll play the Wolf Riders, which have two attacks. And so you're blocking one sword already. I'll play them to Elder Edoras. Okay, next is Frodo. I am going to play an event. There is another way. Activate a different path with the same number as the active path. Add one path defense to the new path. This will be eliminated. I'll flip it over. So this one I will now... Collect. Yeah, so what happens when the path changes? Unlike battlefields or battlegrounds, we can have multiple in play. Like I've seen up to four of them in play at the same time. We're all fighting over through effects and stuff. But when a path comes out, you can only have one at a time. So that other one gets resolved instantly like it was in the combat step. And then Mel gets to actually pick a new one. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to add it. So she gets to look at the two that are in there and choose one to activate. And we'll fire off the ability again just like at the start of the round. And then she gets those points, which is annoying because I haven't gone there yet. So maybe it's my mistake that I'm not throwing things at the path instantly and stuff, knowing she can just take them away like that. Um, so that might be a mistake on my part. But, but she knows to do that to me. She knows I have tricks to do the same thing. So if you notice, she always kind of slaps something down on the path right away to kind of like 
it's mine, especially the two pointer ones. Oh, sorry, I don't know if you want to show that. The one I'm uh, so this one is uh, the Council of Elrond. Each free, free people's player draws a card. Okay, and then that also got another path defense from the event. Wow, this is crazy. Okay, interesting. All that right, one's brutal. so it's this guy. How did I draw? So you're at six already? Maybe mm -hmm. seven, eight, nine, ten. So literally I'm like one away from losing if I don't do something here. So in that case, I guess. Cycle a card. And let's I'm gonna play the commander. Uh he's an Asgul. If in reserve, you may use your action to cycle this card so each shadow player draws a card. Okay, I am actually going to trigger the ring. If in reserve, you may use your action and cycle this card so each free people player draws one card. So draw one card and draw one card. Go ahead. I'm going to put that so, back. I'll put a three sword army here on three swords from Isengard, but they're already being blocked right now. So Ty would go to you, but it would kill this army instead of them being cycled. Uh, so that's that. Next is Frodo. I'm going to attach. This needs to go to. Uh, oh. Oh yeah, I forgot you have tree beard. Oh, why am I doing that this? That is not. No, undo, undo, river. I forgot you have tree beard here. I don't need these. Uh, but what else are they doing? I don't know. Sure. For oh, sure. I did. Yeah, never mind. I forgot you have tree beard. I'm totally playing into like what you're ready for. I'm totally just. This is an ent, right? Yes, it says ent okay, on it. Says ent. I was like, it doesn't say it here, so I thought I couldn't no, no, do that. No, no, okay. in this game are in like, the text, which okay. is weird. But okay, so this needs to go on an ent. And if in play, you may use your action and eliminate this card so the Hobbit player may take up to two Hobbit characters from the cycle pile into hand. Yeah, I'm getting rolled. I'm getting rolled. Oh, well. Okay. Uh, Bonuses. So that was Frodo. Oh, sorry. Oh, Sormon. Uh, I'm going to take the action to cycle this guy so each of us can draw a card. Aragorn, go ahead. I am just going to play a High Elves army. My reserve. Okay, uh, Sormon. Uh... Yeah, I'm going to do this. If in reserve once per round, you may use your action off the Palantir here to uh, take the top three cards of my deck. I can eliminate one, cycle one, and put the remaining one to hand. Okay, 
Uh, go ahead, Frodo. I'm going to trigger this ability. Uh, you may use your, your action. Eliminate this card, so the Hobbit player may take two Hobbits, characters from Cycle Pile, to hand. Hobbit says. Oh, that might be a better play. I would have four cards. No, I can't do that. No, so with these Hobbits, she's able to slap them down and just like protect the path. So knowing that she's loading them up in hand means if if I even went for this path or even the next path, I just know she's gonna have cards in hand. She can stop me, unless I like go all in crazy. Two hobbits showing you that I'm taking two yeah, hobbits. Yeah, looks like they look like hobbits. Yep. Man, these annoying pesky hobbitses. <laughs> okay. All right. Yay. Actually, no, no, no. I'm just gonna put him into play, I guess. I don't know. So dumb. Yeah, yeah. I'll just put him into play. Sorry. That's okay. I don't want to put him on the on the thing yet. Uh, my carryover limit is increased to three, so I have three cards. I'm gonna pass. With Aragorn. I'll put that army there. Uh, Frodo. Mel is already wrecking me, Matthew. Man, she says, take your time, Rob. Mel's going to wreck you. Oh, yeah, she's already wrecking me. But, like, I don't know. What I'm worried is if I put too much in here, I'm then just, I'm like a sitting duck next round, and she just closes it out anyway. But she already has like the tools in to shut me down now. And if she doesn't use them now, she can probably still shut me down next round. So I, unless I draw like into something amazing, but I don't know. I will see. I'm sure someone's going to watch this later in the future after they've played the game a whole bunch and totally rip into my strategy. But like I said, I don't really know for sure what I'm doing. And playing two-handed makes my brain hurt because I'm just no good at it. I don't play any games two-handed. You guys know this. So... But I'll tell you, when we play the dual player mode, and I'm just drawing from one deck and worrying about one deck and keeping track of what's in the cycle and eliminated and planning, I play very well at this game uh, from what I've, I've seen. But uh, this mode is not my strong suit. But I still want to show it off because there are people who play three and four player uh, who would really like how this works. I just don't know if I would do this two player going forward uh, myself, but I'll talk about the differences in the two modes and... The other mode, or this mode, might turn you off at two players, depending on what you're looking for in the game. But I'll, I'll let you know how, how the differences are uh, after. But. but this still gives you an idea of overall the flow of the game and how it works and how battles work and stuff and how cards work. So if you don't like how that works, you're not going to like any mode in the game because it's all the same thing. You're fighting over things in the middle and trying to win victory points. Just when to use certain cards, it, I still don't have the timing down. I'll try not to fail so quick, but if I do, you still get an idea of how the game works. Like, we don't need to play through all rounds to know how it works, so. 
Uh-oh, -uh, totally fine. Definitely gets the point across. You've definitely seen enough already. Gandalf. So Gandalf the Grey, if on a path he's not, it, and if Gandalf the White is played, eliminate this card. So you just added two defense to here, so it has three defense, which totally deals with my swords. But Gandalf will have to be eliminated to eat those swords. That's, I guess, okay. But again, you still get the victory point, so I'm in trouble. Uh, okay, so who's next? This player over here. Hmm. Right now, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I get ten, and I'm at one. And then, knowing my luck, the next battle will draw. I won't have armies for it, and then I'm in trouble. And then the path, I'm no good on path four. And you have already guys ready for path four. One, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but he's got two defense. Mm -hmm. And then the path four will draw, knowing my luck will have defense already on it, even though only like one out of the two usually has defense symbols on it. So, it's, or one out of the three. But somehow you always seem to get the one that has defense on it. It's weird. Well, that one I chose. Uh, no, I know, but the other one before <laughs> that you saw had defense. So I was like, what? Really? Ah. Okay. Um. I don't know. I don't want to commit too much, but... So dumb. Who is it right now? It's this guy. I'm sorry, I feel like I did get a lucky start. Yeah, I know. I'm just looking. Path 4, he can be involved, he can be involved. I'm just trying to think if I'm going to lose the next round for sure. Because, like, I could go and start throwing Nazgul on here. But get nothing out of it. Other than I would have no Nazgul later in the game. That would be bad. Because their strength is from 1 to 3 or path 5 to 9. Uh, and Elrond would be dead at that point. Because after this he can't be in any more paths, which is great. But then he'll just start getting involved in elf fights. And then I'm in trouble there. So do I need to get rid of Elrond now? Is that worth it? That one card, is that literally worth it? Treebeard sitting here, he's going to come in and just wreck me and take this two-pointer. I see this. Hopefully not. Maybe I could throw him in. And help, but then I lose Sauron for the rest of the game. Hmm. This is a real turning point here. Possibly, but if I can survive till round five, path five, I could set up really good for that round. But I'm hoping certain battlegrounds show up, and if they don't, uh, that would be a gamble, not worth it. So I think I need to start committing to this just to put pressure on and like, I don't know, but it might be the wrong thing. I would have committed more if that two-pointer one was still here, but then you like got rid of it right away, and I was like, now I don't know if I should, because you set up defense here. Okay, so let's uh, just throw away... Uh, let's throw away this guy. Let's put a uh, Black Rider's mount, just to show some cool stuff. I'm going to attach this to a Nazgul mount. What, when played on the wielder in reserve, you may immediately move it to a path, even when it, it was played this round. So I will attach it to this guy, and he'll go to this path, adding two corruption, but it's already being blocked. So I get nothing out of it right now, nothing, because you still would win based on this status. So putting all that in, still a thing. Uh, okay, so Aragorn, yep. Here's Elrond throwing two more in, so it's two on four. Okay, Sauron. Let's see here. No 
with the white handed orcs here to add another sword. I think is the play. Hold on. If you bring, if I put it here, that would be five swords. You bring this guy, remove three, and then he has the defense. He has a defense of four. That's, you definitely will get it there. If I put it here, that puts three here. Even if you bring this guy here, it eliminates one. Oh, and then the other one's blocked. Either this, way, this, just so you know, this has to just eliminate an army. Yeah, so army, so you choose. army, army. Oh, oh, it's me I choose? Oh, maybe it's not. So oh, the no, other the, player. I, I, okay, I do choose. Yeah, and it's an army, so... I yeah. thought you could just come in and wreck one. No. Oh, I was playing this totally wrong. Because, like, this guy is so powerful either way. And, uh, do we have Orthonk in play? Oh, no. no. Oh, no. okay. He has no extra, but Treebeard, of course Treebeard. Like, it thematically makes so much sense. He just comes in and stomps on a whole Isengard <laughs> army. I love it. I love it. But I hate that you're playing with the card and not me. Oh, sorry. So, that's that's the problem. But I like to be the villain on the channel, so it's all good. <laughs> so, if he can only come in and I pick the army, I'll put him here, I think. You bring it here and I eliminate this one. Still have to eliminate something, which is okay. Yeah, I'll put it here, I guess. I don't know. Okay, Frodo. Frodo will pass with two cards. And that brings it to this guy. Throw another corruption there. Here we go. Mm Of course he needs to do some... Oh, I have carry over limit of three, so I can pass with him. Sorry. I don't sure. anything yet. Sarmon. Uh, what does Sarmon do? Oh, I don't. When he's in reserve, I have carry over limit of three. Oh. Sorry, sorry. Give me one minute then. Yeah. I have to do something. Please. Oh. When played, draw one card, and additionally, when played or move to a path, you must forsake one card. Forsake? You're literally forsaking your first card with that player? Yep. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. I'm doing something wrong. And then he also has an additional path defense? Nope, that's not. Only Strider or Aragorn. That's Bormir. Oh, Bormir, sorry. Yeah, nope, no, no, no additional. So this is one, wrong two, three, names. four, five. Five and I have three. Interesting. Sorry. Go ahead. I'll play the destroyer. If in reserve, you may use your action. Cycle this card to add an attack, uh, like uh, swords, to an active battleground. Next is Frodo. I do this one. Tense. Tense. Okay, I'm going to play Mary, but I'm going to play um, when played or moved to a Rohan battleground in, sorry, maybe played to a Rohan battleground and supported by a Rohan army. So he's gone here. He's now adding one oh. defense. Yeah, one defense. Yeah, to yeah. that Rohan army. Yeah. 
So it's now one, two, three, four, blocking all four swords. That's great. Okay, uh, this guy. Yeah, I'll cycle this guy. And let's add a sword to this battleground. Okay, Aragorn. Pass. Sormon. Pass. Frodo. Do you have any cards in hand for Frodo? No, but I have things so I can do on the board. Yeah, that's what I mean. So we only know these two things. I know, I'm just counting out things. Yeah, no worries. Sorry. I'm just saying. Oh, sorry. I'm just letting people know like, oh, on sorry, stream sorry. Like, what's happening here. Let's either put Treebeard in the path or put Treebeard on one of these. I have to eliminate an army. Or Gimli can get involved in the path, but not to these because he's a dwarf. Interesting. Right now, the scores are three here to three defense. And you'll get one point from that. Here is a uh, four, five against four. Four. So I'm right now winning this, and it will eliminate these two, but I'm sure the Hobbit has some way of going back in your deck. And this coming. one, no, only on path. He, he would oh. be gone forever. I will kill a hobbit? You could. Oh, I'm putting everything in on that then. Yeah, he's dead. I need to get rid of Mary. You could. I'll put his head on a pike and, and do circles around the battlefield with it on the end. All right, we're bringing Treebeard here. Okay, so this army is eliminated? Yes. So now you have one, two, three here four, against five. four, five against four. Hmm. Hmm. And now we're on to error. Er, er. Oh no, I'm a path. Right, you. That was oh, Roto. It's, it's, uh, this guy will pass. Okay, Aragorn. Forgetting what the stinker is. Uh, will pass. Sormon. So I could put Sormon. He comes with one, two, and could be supported by an army. So I have three more swords, and win this combat. Then I, he gets eliminated after, and I would not have access to his extra card draw, his carryover limit increase, and his cool digging with the Palantir. But I definitely will weaken myself going forward. And is it worth it to kill some more guys here and get the two points? Probably. Or I can save him later, and maybe he can do some stuff on a path, and I can get points that way. This is tough. I, I do not want to give this up, but like I might lose the game because of it. But if I do give it up, I might lose the game because of it. I'm just trying to explain out loud. I hope anyone who's never seen this channel before, all this out loud is not me. I know someone will say like, oh, Rob's a sore player. Like, but what I like to do is be very vocal with what I'm feeling and what I'm seeing with the game to help you with your purchasing decision to know how the thought process is of what could happen in the game, what I'm thinking, what I'm doing, instead of just dead downtime of me thinking. Mm -hmm. um, so please understand that. But I, I'm going to whine and complain, though, about her getting <laughs> stupid hobbits and <laughs> stupid Boromirs and stuff that are uh, doing bad things to me. Because that's what a shadow player should do. So I hope you guys understand that. But um, Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think I should save him for the path and the card draw and the limit. And ah, oh, there is a cloak that I'm pretty sure I've seen already. Yeah, it was like literally my first opening hand, I think. Uh, this, the wielder is eliminated in combat. I could cycle it instead, but I don't have this right now because I wasn't sure if I was going to see him anytime soon. 
So the fact that this isn't on him also is playing into my decision here of not having Sormon and get involved because I lose him for the rest of the game. He never comes back. So, so, tr so much trouble. But right now, you win, you win, and you win. Like, all, all these points still. I got nothing from all that I put in. I mean, I did commit quite a bit. But still, to get not, not as much as I, I think I committed. And I'm about to commit even more. And I still might not even win. You might still have tricks for here. I might not win just by putting him in. And I definitely hurt my long-term game. But I don't think I have a long-term game. Oh, man. But it's sad to see these three skulls go away. Which is like, I need these for helping me get corruption on the path. And stopping you on paths. When do you have to flip the rings? Uh, never, Yogi. I, I never have to. I could. The reason why I'm not with this player right now is because I don't think I'll draw any more yellow cards because just so you know, my cycle pile, like, I don't care if Mel knows. I've already seen so many yellow cards, so I don't think I'm going to get lucky enough to draw into more yellow to help me at these combats. I don't know. I know I'm not going to draw into this. If I hadn't seen this, this woven thing, I would have drawn. I can just draw. It's fine. But I don't know if I should. I have to run to the bathroom if you yeah, want a mic. Sure. Then you can talk through what you're Yeah, I do too. But I, oh. I, yeah, actually, let's just do that right now, actually. Yeah, we'll be right back in like two minutes. And we're back. Sorry. Thank okay. you for your patience. <laughs> All right. Now we can concentrate more. <laughs> yes. Uh, so. Oh, yeah. Back uh, to your decision. Just, to, just so Yogi gets to see it, I guess. He keeps asking about it. So I, I will draw two cards here. Yeah, sure. I'll draw two cards with this player as my action. Okay. Proto. I mean, it is a way to buy an action, but it's now gone for the rest of the game, which is kind of sucky, but... Proto will pass. I might not even get to the end of the game where we score points, so. <laughs> Thorman. What can I do here? He can't have anything that can interact with these battles, so that's pointless. Here I could start putting Witch King and the Black Easterling into this path, but you're already showing five defense. I can put and get up to six and stop you from getting one point. But then I'm throwing away all these corruption skulls, which could be more points in a path you can't defend as easily. So I might just give up that one point, I think. 
All right, pass here on uh, Witch King. Sorry, on the Witch King's turn. Mm, Aragorn. Pass. Oops. Okay, back to Sormon, who's just trying to buy time. I will pass. Okay. I will pass. And Frodo already passed. So yeah. that's all the passes. So you're the first player, so you get to determine which order these all resolve in. Well, let's just start here. That's fine. Okay. I don't think there's any difference. I think the only way it would matter if certain things were getting cycled and you had ways of like pulling things back and yeah. like you're about to draw all your cards, so you want stuff like. Yeah, I'm not really still, sure. I, I, I haven't seen sure. a situation yeah. where it would matter. Maybe in the expansion. Okay. <laughs> just kidding. <clears throat> so here I am blocking for three. And I'm attacking for three. So, so how this works, let's resolve it all step by step so you really understand. Now we've got like full juicy combat going on here. Mm -hmm. So I have three swords, as Mel said. Step one, we check to see how many swords get eaten up by defense on the actual location. So that's one of them. So two are remaining. Now Mel needs to start destroying or eliminating uh, cards on the other side to start blocking the additional swords. So Gandalf the Grey will be eliminated mm -hmm. to prevent two of them. Okay, so I'll eliminate him. So now I don't have any swords left. You successfully defended. All attackers get eliminated. So if another Isengard location comes out, I have no armies there anymore. Uh, and then you get this one to get one point. Now we go to this one. I have one, two, three, four swords to get blocked by the location. So you need to start eliminating cards on the other side to start preventing those other two. Otherwise, I win. Other two. Yeah. So you can eliminate. So I will do. Uh, actually, Basically, who do you want to keep? Out I'm going to keep three? Treebeard, and Wait. we're going to eliminate these two, which is the army okay. and Mary. So you've successfully eliminated all. You still have a defender there. I have no more swords. He just gets cycled, mm -hmm. so he doesn't get eliminated in the combat. He wasn't stabbed. Uh, we could maybe use him again later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I get two. Uh, you get two more points. I'm going to win, right? Did I really no. mess that up? Okay. No, because there's only one. Yeah. Yeah, okay. One. I was like, shoot. Okay. Um, so here I have three uh, skulls or corruption symbols. Two get blocked by the path. One is left, so you must eliminate a I card on the other side. I will eliminate and oh. I will save Elrond. Elrond will get cycled. These all get eliminated, so I just lost all those Nazgul. That's, I hurt so much. Hurt so much. Oh. And they got nothing out of it. Nothing. Yeah, bad plays. If you want to be a good uh, shadow player, do the opposite of what I do. <laughs> Definitely. All right. So okay. that's that. Victory check. Uh, nope. You're up by nine. You're literally one away and you would have won. If you got one more point somehow there, you would have just instantly ended the game and Mel would have won. Uh, but now we go to the draw step, which I have plus two draw over here. So I draw one, three. two, three, four, five, six. Three. Over here I have plus one draw. And I had two cards carried over. So one, two, three, four. I need one more card. So I'll shuffle. And I'm shuffle just gonna move really this good. now while you're shuffling, because oh, you're going to be first player. The Stormon, I believe that is. I'm gonna peek at my hand while you. Uh whoa, what are you doing? You need to flip this token. Now. Oh shoot, sorry, sorry. I need to see the evil side. Give me some give me some hope. Shadow. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm going to activate a shadow battlefield. And we're in path four. Four now. Okay. Dol Goldor. Oh, no. The Free People's Battleground, Lorien, must also be activated or reactivated. Is this good for me or bad for me? I don't, I don't know. know. Lori Lorien has not been activated yet. Okay. So it'd be awesome if that could have pulled that out of your victory pile. But it, of course, didn't. So... I'll just have to deal with it. So, Lorien, uh, the Shadow Battleground, Dol Guldur must be activated or reactivated. So, it could have worked the opposite way and hurt me. So, I can attack this one with monstrous characters from my Sormon player's deck or Mordor characters from my Witch King player's deck. You can defend with elves and wizards, and you already get a free two defense. Of course, it's worth two points. This is not good for me. Um, and then Dol Guldur, it's only worth one. And yeah, I get two defense on it. Awesome. And you can also attack it with elves and wizards. So you gotta make some choices here. Obviously, you just go heavy for the uh, two-pointer one. It makes sense, but I have to go really serious for it if I want to win it. 
Uh, and then a path out of four. Path four, I will pick... Uh, I like this one. Sounds good. Okay. Do I like it? Kazadoom! <laughs> the monstrous player draws two cards. Okay, that's helpful because the monstrous player needs to get involved in some combats here. So, <laughs> one, two. We have so many cards in that hand. Doesn't mean they're all the right color I need. I know. Or, what happened last round, I actually drew all the yellow armies I needed. But that means I have to use armies to pay, to pay up for other armies. Yeah. Very frustrating. <laughs> I'll get into that at the end of the video for sure. <laughs> uh, okay. You are first, Soramon. Uh, Soramon. So, you're saying Kazadoom is in play? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. The Balrog says, welcome to my home. When played or moved to a path or battleground, each free people's player must forsake one card. He's plus one corruption on Kazadoom. I feel like I need to go there, right? I don't know. Yeah, I'll do that as my first action. I mean, what else is he doing? I can't let you get two points off this path. I'm sure you'll bring, a, like, somehow the, the Balrog will get beaten by three hobbits somehow. I don't know how that works, but that's what happens. At least Gandalf the Grey won't be showing up to deal with him. Looking at my... Okay, so that was Sormon. Frodo. I didn't even look at my hand. I just know I want to put that guy there. No, that's fair. It's known information, so I might as well use that to buy me some time to oh, see yeah. if you sorry, can sorry. do some more things. I just need to see something. Don't play the wrong card. Oh, so it is still there. Okay. This is my draw deck. One, two, three, four, five. Five is in my draw deck. I'm actually going to use my ring to draw two cards. Go ahead. Beautiful. Brian W., happy birthday. I saw on the Discord. Brian oh. W.'s birthday today. Brian says, a bit quiet in here. Has Rob kicked out all the other troublemakers? Brian. <laughs> Welcome, Brian. Yes, Cynthia, we are both playing two-handed each. Brian, I wish you a mediocre birthday. <laughs> hey, Cynthia, how's it going? Glad to see you. <laughs> Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Brian. <laughs> oh, yes, did your, yours... Okay, so sorry, this was what? the two... Uh, you, this has an ability I have to forsake a card or something, Oh, right? yeah, sorry, duh. Uh, when I read it out loud and I just thought you were doing it. Uh, when sorry. played or moved to a path or battleground, the free people's player must forsake one card. Forsake. So perfect learning opportunity. Forsaking, you can forsake from the top of your deck. You can forsake a card from hand or forsake a card from reserve, which just means eliminate it. And you can choose in any case. And some cards you forsake from the top of the deck, as we've seen already, they will avoid the elimination pile if they're really important. Thanks, Darren. All right, forsake from both. Back to what you were doing. Okay. That is this guy. Oh yeah, I should probably think about what I'm doing here. Okay, I'll play the Beguiler, uh, who has a if in reserve. I may use my action to cycle this, so each free people's player must cycle one card from hand. Put him into play, and Aragorn, go ahead. How many cards do you have in both? More than Four three? Four over okay. here, and here I have half my deck. Yeah, so I have three cards <laughs> as Aragorn, and I will pass. 
Because if you're going to make me cycle, I don't want to cycle that card. Uh, this is... Four more? You can pass if you have less cards or if then, you your carry over. Yeah, one. my carry over is two, but I have less cards in both of your characters. Okay. Here I have one. That's two, so three. annoying. I have four here. Okay. Uh, so we're on to Sormon. Yeah. Well, I need to be able to see what you do with the, all those well, cards. Well, I need to be able hand. to see what you do. <laughs> I'm trying to have a turn where I'm in control here, but it seems like Euro is in control. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Okay, this might seem crazy, but I'm going to use the Palantir ability. Draw three cards. I'm digging for something. Oh, so annoying. Two of the cards I want showed up. Oh, no. So, I definitely... Uh, should I do? What should I do? Keep one. Uh... uh <laughs> I'm going to bet we don't get that far. Yep. I bet we don't get that far. Okay. Um, next is... I'll exhaust this. Just say we did it. Okay. Uh, Frodo. Sorry, this is Forsake or uh, Cycle? Cycle. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Snowball. If eliminated for any reason, including being Forsaken, cycle this card instead. If in your reserve, you may use your action and cycle this card to draw two cards. Okay. Okay, let's play the day without dawn. So this is draw seven cards from these, eliminate one, play up to two armies and cycle the rest. How many armies do you think I'm going to see? Well, oh, you've already recycled. I don't know. I don't know how many you have. I don't know either. You're going to find at least one. How many do you get to play? Two? Normally I'll find one or two, but today, streamer luck, we'll see. <laughs> how many do you get to play? Two. Okay. Oh, I found one, two, three. Three. Okay. Oh, wow. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Okay. I had a couple in hand too, so I was a little worried. Play three swords here. Let's play another one here. And I will eliminate... Uh, and cycle the rest. Okay. Go ahead, Aragorn. Defend for two more here. Or mom. No. This guy. Cycle to play. Of flocks this time properly. Oh. So they'll go on a path. They're adding in one corruption. To, so I have four corruption here and no defense on Kazadoom. Okay, Frodo, go ahead. 
You're winning by nine, Mel. Stop huffing and puffing. I know, I know, I know. I just should have done something sooner. Welcome to my world. There's a lot of things I should have done sooner in this game. Hopefully it didn't lose me the game. Oh no, Sam Gamgee. In reserve, you may use your action as cycles. Oh, okay. So he's just bringing he's just, one. Just going to the path for one, yeah. Walking one corruption. Yeah. Yeah. So important that you need to stop that one point. Okay. Uh, all right. Next is this guy. So here you have four defending for four. I'll put two more in that combat. Aragorn. I'll attach this to Sam, which will add two defense or path defense on token. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Sormon. Sorry. No, it's fine. You <laughs> always have those cards every time. I just, it's, yeah, it always happens. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four. And you're blocking two first, and then you'll be eliminated. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think the frustrating part, frustrating part with these cards is how you keep getting them over and over again. So if in reserve, you don't have that ability. Oh, so he's actually eliminated. Yeah, he's, this is the first time I saw him. I dug for him. Uh -oh. The last time I put it on Frodo yeah, and it got cycled back around. Yeah. Yeah, seeing you like use them over and over again is it gets frustrating. But it's like using it once is like oh, okay, that's annoying. But when you keep doing gotcha, gotcha every single time, it's 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 annoying. Mm -hmm. But like I should know. But like it's like that's part of the advantage. You play this game a lot, you'll get used to these things, which is fun. And I can see it being really strategic with two players, even four. Once you start knowing, like okay, I've seen this, I haven't seen that, you can really plan for it. Again, we're still new, and like I still am getting caught by the same tricks. It's just me being dumb, but uh, it's totally fine. But I don't want to lose. All right. So who's next? This guy. I don't know if he. Works. I don't think I, don't I did, did anything, anything yet. Oh, so I can do this action. Uh, you may use your action to activate a different path of the same number. So then we'll resolve this combat. So I have four. Two get eaten here. You have to eliminate something. Mm -hmm. So these are both gone. So I actually prevent you from getting a path for once. So this stops Mel from getting two points. I put this face down in my score pile off to the side here. And I actually gain a corruption. So I'll just add that to my amazing score of two points. Uh, and these guys are now eliminated. Never to be seen again. Also, just FYI, this card is now gone. So... Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> just so you know that it can't come back. Know. Unless there's another one. I don't know if there's two. Okay, so now I get to pick a path of the same number that was a four. Yeah, that was a four. So now I get to look at the two fours, and I get to decide on one of these. So I'm looking at them. They're both worth two points. Uh, both don't have defense on them, which is nice for me. One is the Doors of Durin. The monstrous player may forsake one card to add a corruption to this path. And the Cadre says, each free people's player must forsake one card. I think I'm going to do Cahadris. So each free people's player must... I don't have a hand as... So you can, must forsake off the top of your deck at random or a card in play. Yep. Okay. And I will forsake this card. That's fine. This doesn't have an ability. No. Okay. Frodo. And he's allowed to go to path four. Yep. Three Bring to, three to nine. I'll put the cave troll on here to bring one corruption. He can go to path four or eight to nine. Okay. Sorry, that was there, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. 
Frodo went. This is Frodo. This oh, is Frodo. I'm doing the wrong deck. Oh, I'm doing sorry, the wrong sorry. deck. No worries, yeah, no worries. Yeah. Wrong deck. Uh Sauron player. Um cards. You have no cards in hand? Mm, no ha cards in either hand. Okay, he'll pass. Aragorn? We'll use the ring. Okay. Go ahead. Now Sormon will go. I'll do that. Same thing I just did. Mm -hmm. Cave Troll here to add one. Okay, next Frodo. Frodo will use Bilbo. If in reserve, you may use your action, cycle this card, and draw two cards. Okay. So we'll cycle this. And then this guy. I'm now going to use this. If in reserve, you may use your action to cycle this card, so each free people's player must cycle one card from hand. Okay. Oops. So now you have two cards in hand on each side, right? So yep. you'll have to take one of those and put it in your cycle pile. Yep. All right. Start on this one. <laughs> Cycle that one. Luke in the chat's asking, has anyone played the other game, Battle of the Five Armies or Hunt for the Ring, board games made by the same company? Uh, we played Battle of the Five Armies on the channel. We've done a playthrough of that. We've played it a couple times uh, in the past, even before we streamed it. Recently, I think. Didn't we do that We, we streamed it recently, but we have played it over the years. Oh, yeah. Like We've owned that game for many years. I do love that game. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a quicker, shorter, lighter version of War of the Ring, which is awesome. Hunt for the Ring, we recently just picked up a copy at Gen Con. That's been out of stock at our local retailers. So we hope to play that on the channel sometime in the near future uh, and do a playthrough and look at that game. Um, but yeah, I just not played that. But I do love uh, Sword and Sorcery series by the same company. Really great dungeon crawling game. And I also love the horror game by Ares Games, uh, Last Friday. It's one we stream on the channel before. I love playing that one every October. A one versus many kind of like Fury of Dracula style kind of game, but it's like as the theme of like Friday the 13th. Um, I like that game a lot. Okay, yeah, right. Aragorn. Yeah, you just did that. That was the character yeah. that made me. Yeah, Aragorn. Ah. Uh... So Mel has a card in hand. So this is something that hasn't come up yet, but she needs to cycle a card to play that card. So you think with one card in hand, she'd have to be forced to keep it, but she could forsake a card off the top of her deck at random, eliminating it from the game as the cost to pay that play that card. But it could be something she Which needs. Which I'm going to do. But it, yeah? there's two cards in here. There's two cards in here that I... Uh, let me just You might sure. pull some Hobbit that doesn't get Forsaken and stays in... Oh, no, that no, would that, be in this that deck. Was the yeah, yeah. There's two cards in here that are key to my deck that are still here. There's four cards. Oh, but I, I really need to play I this. It. I hope this is the worst Forsake of your life. No. Okay, good. Okay, so Mel's just eliminated a card from the game to play. Oh, wow. The High Elves army. That's crazy. So here I have... Four, five, six, and you're now blocking for six. That is crazy stuff. So annoying you are. That was the lucky draw with this. I was hoping for something else. Yeah, but it definitely is. That was a lucky draw. <laughs> Welcome to Mel's luck table. All right, so Sorma. <laughs> Not salty at all. all right. <laughs> I think I'm going to be sleeping on the couch tonight. <laughs> That's like I can pull this out. That's like I can pull this out. Oh, man. No, but it's fun. We've had some games where Mel's crushed me and some where I've crushed her. And oh, some yeah. that are really close and tense. I'll talk more about it after. Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll leave the thoughts to the end. I could go on and on all day, but I'm trying not to, you know. Luke had had some questions too. Luke, if, if you're still here at the end, throw them back in the chat later yeah. about like complexity and all that kind of stuff when we get to our, our thoughts at the end. We're not ignoring yeah. you. Not everyone cares about what we think. I've learned. Some <laughs> people are just here to see us play the game and how it flows and see the whole game. So I respect those people on YouTube. The majority of people aren't watching live. Majority of people will watch this video later. Yeah, they can scrub through everything. But a lot of people don't want to hear our thoughts, don't care what we think. They just want to make their own value decisions, which I totally respect. Yep. So I'm trying to present as much information here to show the game off for our first stream. Of course, if we play this again and we stream the different scenarios, we can just chat out, hang, have fun and all that. Um, but right now it's game focus time is what I'm trying to get through. Um, and then later, uh, we can at the end of the stream, we can talk all about it and answer questions and stuff. Just trying to do this one a little more organized. But I still can't even do it. All right. <laughs> Let's do... Two there.
I'll just move this guy here. Out of corruption. Frodo. Frodo will pass with one card. Okay. Sormon. Or sorry. Sauron. Mouth of Sauron or the Witch King deck. I should keep saying. I see the wrong one. He'll come here and he'll pair with... I don't know, one of the armies to get a bonus attack. So I'm now up one here, right? Mm hmm Aragorn. I'll pair with an army. Hiya. Okay. Uh, was this worth? Two points? Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Okay, uh, Sormon. I will play... Uh, I'm going to play this guy, the Kahadris the Cruel. When played to Kahadris Path, activate a different path four. And yeah, so he'll come here, and now I have three to your two. Mm -hmm. We'll resolve it, so he's eliminated. Yep, as well as the axe. You're up by one on there. Yep, and all these guys will be eliminated. I get one corruption. Woo! I prevent you from taking two more points. And then we'll take the last path four, so there's only one to choose. The Doors of Durin, the monstrous player may forsake one card to add a corruption to this path. Which I will do. The monstrous player is uh, this character here, because I have monstrous cards in my deck. Forsake off the top. Do I forsake and play? Or do I forsake from hand? Hmm. I'd be so upset if I do this. I should just do known info. Sake. Okay, so I add a corruption to this. Uh, okay, Frodo. Frodo will pass for now with one card. Pass here. Pass uh, yep. to Aragorn. Yep, pass. Sormon. I'm winning here still? Nope, we're tied, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So this one I probably should have not forsaken. Sorry. I will forsake. Uh, forsake this one instead. Sorry. I, I thought I was winning. Um, and I will then play this guy here. Uh, here. Play this guy here, we'll add a sword because monsters can go there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Frodo. Frodo, sorry, just thinking. Frodo will pass for now with one card. Uh, I'll pass here, Aragorn. Pass. Pass for Sormon. Frodo. Pass already. Oh, I think it's, oh, yeah, it yep. ends, right? Yep. Okay, so I get this one, I'll resolve, I get a point. Woo! So I should be at four, yeah. Then this one we resolve. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight swords. Two get blocked here, so now I have to start eliminating to eat up the other six. So you'll successfully two, two four. four, five. So you eliminate all those cards, mm -hmm. and I have one sword left, which means I win this one narrowly to get two points. Okay. And these guys are all gonzo for the rest of the game. Holy crap. I'm just going to have to hope that you run out of cards, I think, at this point. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, this one, uh, I have one corruption to nothing defending, no other players. So I just gain one corruption and I prevent you from getting those two points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven to ten. All that in and that's all I got. 
All right, so um, now we draw. Yep. Three. I got a shuffle. One, two, three. I've drawn everything, but I still need to shuffle. I don't need to draw anymore. So this should or be a cycle, cycle. Good hand. Now. Gotta recycle my cycle pile. Oops. Oops. Uh, I get. Okay. And then over here, I still have my plus one from Sormon. So I get one, two. Oh, I get an extra one over here. Yes. Yeah, plus one, plus one, four, five, six, yeah. And then over here, I had one card, and then I'll draw five more. Hopefully this lines up or else. Okay, who's the first player now? Frodo again? Yeah. Back to Frodo. So we get this battleground on your side, which is Dull Amaroth. Okay. The Dunedain player may forsake one card to draw one card. Yes. Um... Yeah. You can forsake from play. No. Nope. They're fine. Or the software. Oh, there. okay. That was a good play. Yeah, okay. Great. That was a good play. All right. This one. Oh, sorry. So the next path we're fighting over. So each free people's player draws two cards and cycles one card from hand. One, we're two. Egladil. And we'll cycle one. Mm -hmm. Uh we are on path five. I just want to look at what I need here. Cycle that one from this hand. One, two. Let's do that. So let's cycle this one. Okay. And then Frodo is first. And I can only gain, hmm, I can only gain two points from this. Mordor is staging a comeback. <laughs> uh. Oh, Rob, that's cool. So Rob, Rob is commenting too. Rob says, hey, Rob and Mel, you directed me to Jaws the Lion the other day, and my buddies have, haven't stopped playing. We love it so much. Want to say thank you for the great advice. Happy game. Oh, that is that's great awesome. to hear. I'm so happy. I was hoping to hear a response from you about that. Yeah, he was asking, he had some friends, he wasn't sure he wanted, he was like naming all the games we were playing on the channel he saw that were so awesome, but he's like, I don't know where to start, I have a gaming group that I want to like, get them into these kind of games, where do I start? And I was like, man, go, uh, something with a great tutorial, something with great value, in case you don't continue with it, you didn't put too much money into it, and something that is highly regarded among players is obviously the Gloomhaven system, so I thought, Jaws the Lion. Yeah, that's cheap. perfect. Can they can play the first two scenarios to get into it slowly, see if they like it. If they don't want to play it, then oh well, you're you're in, you know, thirty to fifty bucks, depending if you got the game on sale or whatever. And uh yeah, I think it's a great way to start into those kind of games. There are lighter dungeon crawlers, but I feel like that one can get you into it, and it's like yeah, more people love it. It's very rare to find someone who hates it, so I thought it was a good gamble. That's great. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to play Fatty Bulger. If in reserve, you may use your action and eliminate this card to draw three cards. Hmm. Mm. 
Okay. I'm just gonna peek at this, okay? I'll just put the Mordor orcs into play into reserve. Okay. Yeah. Aragorn. We're going to do, we're going to play Knights of Dol Armoth on there so they get an additional bonus uh, defense. You, is you on path five? Mm -hmm. On path six is me. Path seven is you. Path eight is me. Path nine is you. If we go that far, now we have two. Yeah, yeah. so those are both coming into play at some point. Okay, got a gamble, I guess. Okay, uh, so I'm on player. Mm -hmm. The Black Fleet. Go ahead, Frodo. Trigger his ability. Uh, if in reserve, uh, you may use your action and eliminate this card to draw three cards. One, two, three. Go ahead. Hmm. the Begular, the one that can use an action to cycle him to make you cycle a card from each of your hands. Okay. Aragorn. Nope, that's this one, sorry. Aragorn will pass with two cards. Sormon. Those guys in the play. Oh no. Frodo will go on the path. Okay. I'll pass. Aragorn. Aragorn will pass with two cards. Stormon will pass. Frodo. Can't pass, so... Tree beard. Get the hell out of here. Alright. And uh -oh. then... Stormon will pass. Aragorn? Pass. Uh, sorry. Witch King will pass. Aragorn will pass. Stormon will pass. And I'll pass. Okay, so that ends that round. Uh, so you get this one, this guy gets cycled, you get one okay. point. And then this one, you get one point. You cycled. One oh yeah, point. you actually give one. Uh, okay. So, ready up these guys. And first player will flip to this guy, we'll draw... Three. How many do I get? Four. 
Oh, sorry. I get five here, so I'm going to draw these two. I need to shuffle here. And uh, I'll draw one, two. And then here I draw six more. I have two carried over. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I'm drawing one of my battleground. The monstrous player draws two cards with Moria. One point. Two defense. Monstrous can only defend. You can attack with dwarves, elves, or wizards. Okay. Uh, this guy draws... Oh yeah, his deck was out, so I need to shuffle... Oh, it's getting... This, I guess. I don't, I don't know how that... What I did yeah, that. I just... I may have just... Oh, this is my deck, actually. Sorry, I put it down. Yeah, I just shuffled to draw extra. This should be my deck. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, uh, I was like, wait, how'd that happen? I just cycled. Uh, I draw two. Yeah. Yeah, that should be my deck. Okay, then oh, sorry, uh, path six. I will pick... I like this one, I think. Emin Mule. Each free people's player oh. must forsake one card. <laughs> You can forsake and play, or the top of your deck, or from hand. Uh, oh, that might be... Weird. Doug, you can leave now. <laughs> Just kidding. Hi, Doug! <laughs> <laughs> tough choice, tough choice. Okay, forsake from here, and I need to forsake one from here. Three points we have on the board here. All right. It's a close game. I don't know. I'm like, Rob has come back. Yeah. I, I got lucky. Like, I held on. Like, I had gambled not putting him into combat. So, like, Try to win a couple points. I really thought you were putting them in. I know, but I think I'd have been way worse off right now if I did. Um, we will see, though. Actually, that reminds me. Let me check. What did I He's get? He's going first, this guy. Here. Yeah, I need to look at both players' hands to see what I should do on one side. Who's taken on, like, the only guy that can defend is Monstrous, which are on this side. And here, path six, what is possible? Yes, lots. In there. Okay, good. Okay. Um Let's do... Cycle. And let's go. Want to play Grishnak? You can go on path six. If on a path I'm going to use your action to eliminate this card to add one corruption. Okay, so we got one corruption. Ergorn. I'm gonna play a hobbit. Oh, Strider. Ergorn blocking for Strider Strider. blocking for two. Yep. You can go on up to path six. Okay. He can. And if on a path, you may use your action and activate a path with the next higher number. If Aragorn is played, eliminate this card. Huh. Okay. Uh, that goes to Stormon. Hmm. Hmm. 
the peak. Yeah, yeah. And then let's see. Good. Rider. I can mean, put this there. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I'll just move Storm on there. Mm. Yeah, he'll bring three corruption. So that way, if you do resolve this one, I'll get points out of it at least. And that's the last. He can only go on past six, and he's done after that anyway. So sure. Might as well get him checked in already. You pushed my hand. Proto. I just need a peek mm -hmm. because I don't know if that I, yeah, yeah, I do no need that. In there and he's in there, so I don't need that right now. Okay, so that's not gonna. Brian happen. W, you are correct. Don't give away our secrets. Oh well. Uh, he has. If in reserve, you may use your action cycle this card and draw two cards. Friggin' Bilbo. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will. I'm gonna play. Get rid of this to. I'm gonna attach the Nazgul's mantle. The wielder, if the wielder is eliminated in combat, cycle it instead along with any wielded items. So I'm gonna put this on the guy that's in the combat. Actually, yeah. I wish he was Nazgul, but that's not how that's gonna work. So Aragorn. Sorry, I'm just doing some math. One second. Uh, yeah, give me the points. Two points. I can do that. And that. I'll do two. Hopefully, I'll get them both. Doug, Wolf's Sworn is tomorrow. You, you tuned in on the wrong day, my friend. I know you're just kidding. <laughs> get out of here. Okay, I am actually going to trigger this. This sure. may be a bad play, but I, I yeah, have yeah. a I have a strategy I think it is. here. You don't even know what I'm going to do. Okay, <laughs> so if on a path, you may use your action to activate the path of the next higher number. So we finish this one. So I have uh, one, two, three, four, right? four, and you're only blocking two, two of it. Yeah. So he's eliminated, which is fair. He's so I get two points. Yeah, this goes here. These guys, this guy goes cycled. And then do I get to choose if it says activate a path of the next highest number? I get to this choose it with seven? Gone. Sorry, what? I get to choose, right? Because it says activate the path of the next highest number. I get to yeah, choose I with seven? Yeah, I think it was pick okay. one unless it says a random okay. or something. So Mel is actually speeding up the game by a whole round because uh, she's bringing in a path seven. So when we go to activate a path of the next round, we'll actually have to go one higher. So she's shortened the game by one round here, which is kind of scary. I think I do this one. I'll take that one. So she chose to activate Path 7, Osgiliath. The Duna name player may forsake one card to draw three cards. Okay, forsake one card. Seven, two, three. Okay. Uh, uh-huh.
actually let's do this one and put a candles of corpses adding one corruption all right proto i am going to just trigger bilbo mm -hmm. if in reserve you may use your action cycle this card and draw two cards Okay, on to the Witch King. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Uh, all right. Cycle. Throw a corruption here. Aragorn. Oh, Aragorn is here. Oh, when played a draw card, sorry. You're bringing one attack here. Mm -hmm. But I'm defending for two. Okay. Uh, so now it's on to Sormon. He obviously drew into another elf army of some kind. I don't know if you've been eliminating them properly, but it's crazy. We're eliminated. Oh, nice. Hmm. Like our cycle to play them. Go ahead, Frodo. I'll play Pippin. Pippin is blocking a corruption. Yeah. Mm. So right now, it's, I'm up. I'll pass here. Aragorn. When played or moved to path seven, you may activate a different path seven. Okay, so this I is two. I have two, so you get this one. Mm -hmm. so I think these guys are gone. These are eliminated. Oh, this goes in this deck. I get one. And then another path yep. seven is one of these two. Mm -hmm. I'll take that one. Uh, Dunedain player draws a card. Oh, and it has a defense on it. Surprise. That's there. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sormon.
Frodo. How many cards are in this hand, sorry? Uh, three. Three. Which is higher than my carryover limit. No, that's fair. Uh, okay, so let's do... We will play Gandalf. When played, remove Gandalf the Grey from the game. He's already eliminated. He's already elim in my eliminated mm -hmm. pile. And while in reserve, doesn't matter. And if Forsaken from the top deck, doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, this guy. Actually, let's move cards. I'll move this guy there. Bring one corruption. Okay, uh, that is on to Aragorn. Like loss. Uh, and I can't do his ability. Uh, so on, on there. The golem there. Uh, yeah, cycle already. Okay, uh, Frodo. Frodo will pass. Yeah, this guy. Aragorn. Elf. That's the bow. What's so this do? Uh, the wielder of this item cannot wield any other items. Oh, sorry. Yeah, just a total of three. Three blocking three, of course. Uh, Sormon. Mm. I'll pass over to Frodo. Frodo will pass. Sormon. Uh, let's draw two. Aragorn? Pass. Sormon? Pass. Frodo? Pass. Uh, let's attach this to him. Okay. Uh, which is the Morgul Blade. If on a path you may use your action to eliminate it to add one corruption. Aragorn? Pass. Uh, Sormon pass, Frodo pass. pass, back to here, I'll eliminate this to add a corruption. Mm-hmm. Aragorn? Pass. Sormon uh, pass. Yeah, yeah. Frodo? Pass. Back to this guy. I'll pass. All right, that's all of us. So I get one corruption out of this, right? Mm -hmm. I have one, two, three, four. One gets blocked here, so you must eliminate mm -hmm. cards to take the other. I gain a corruption, prevent you from getting this. These guys, unfortunately. Oh, uh, Golem, though, because he's kind of like a sneaky hobbit. If this card's eliminated in path combat, I cycle it instead. Oh, nice. Nice. And then here, these guys are. Uh, so actually, only two, two swords need to die. But nobody's there to die. So you win. Oh, yeah. So these guys get cycled. No, they get no, eliminated. Eliminate, eliminate. Sorry. Because they were attacking, yeah. Eliminate, wrong deck. And then Unless they have text on them that says, and then you get one point from that. I don't think they did. Gandalf might have. Nope. All right. All right. So ready up, my guys. And I draw on this side just four cards. Oh, yeah. So I have to cycle. Oh, man. I'm down to <laughs> only a few cards left. I know. I'm hoping that I can just. I had one carry over. 
Then on this side, I have none to carry over, but I do get two extra draw still. Two, I have to cycle. A few more cards on this side at least. Um, thanks. And the first player is now Aragorn, I believe. Mm -hmm. So we get this one. Helgrier. Uh The Dunedin player may forsake one card to draw one card. It looks like looks like only uh, you know Southron uh, characters can or armies. I and will things. forsake one to draw ball. one. Okay, sure. And then okay. path eight now. Yeah. Ooh. Which sucks, so that messes it, it, up things. Yeah, it does mess up things because now this is a benefit for you. This path. Is it though? Yeah. But you still got a benefit from a path you didn't skip around, right? So. No, path seven, I I got benefits from. Yeah, so it's but it, just, it just like throws what's, off. what's path nine? Who does that benefit? Uh, is it you then, right? This is you. yeah. Path nine would benefit me. Yeah, so we're missing. We're not probably not going to do any path nine unless one of us somehow jumps ahead to it, right? Or uh, no? No, we, we would still unless unless yeah. yeah, yeah we still would. Wow. Never mind. I'm tired. All right. Uh, this is you. Yeah. Oh, me. Uh, this one. Well, the path, Shalob's Lair, the monstrous player draws two cards, yes. Oh, is that the guy that has cards? Oh, okay. And one card in deck. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is worth two, path eight. Nice. Okay, path eight. Uh, Aragorn, go first. Aragorn, that's me. That means he'll be nice. What am I doing here? I'm defending here. You can attack with all those snakes. Mm, my Sothron already. I've been gambling on this. Which is fine. I can just let you have one point to so then maybe make it to number nine. <laughs> okay, so then if that's the case. We've spent all our rings. Wow. Yeah. The like first game ever. I think I've seen us spend all the rings. Actually, you have more than three cards in both of your characters' hands, so I'm going to pass. Aragorn's going to pass. Let's see what happens. Because I only have three cards. Oh, that might be the play, actually. Might be the play. Put the Black Fleet on Pelagrier, and they get a bonus, so two swords. Okay. All right, Frodo. Frodo's going to do something we actually haven't ever done in any game that we've ever played, I don't okay. think. Okay, tell me what so, it is. Maybe it's not allowed. No, it's allowed. <laughs> so I'm going to eliminate two cards from my hand to draw a card. Whoa. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I have cards You're here that... Winnow winno or whatever it's called? Win What's that called with winno? that action? I don't know. The Winnow? W-I-N-N-O-W? -N -N You're not going to win now. <laughs> well, I have cards that let's tell I you. Know. I guess fine. Okay, sure, I can, just do it. They can only be attached to Gandalf, and both my Gandalfs oh, are yeah. discarded. Of course, then you so, yeah. That makes sense. I might as well. So it's a way, even if you have like craptastic cards still in your deck. Which, yeah, yeah, let's do these cards. So forsake two cards, draw one card. Okay. We've never done that before, but sometimes you just get in those situations. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool, though. Then there's an option to get out of that. I'll just have dead cards. Although you can use the cards to pay for other cards. Yeah. That's cool. But you can get down to a point in your cycle time oh, yeah. where that's all you have left. Yep, that's yep, that's bad. true. Yep. Not a good thing. Uh, Oh, Michael says the win now action seems super overpowered. <laughs> what do you mean you win now? <laughs> yeah, it's us this one here. Uh, winnow. I don't know if it's I thought it was win now. Win now. I don't know what the heck that word means. Anyone know <laughs> what, it, what it stands for? Win now. Win now by eliminating two cards from your hand to draw a card. I don't know how to say that, but whatever.
What are the odds of... Oh, okay. Hmm. One battleground left, and it's like I could have bet on the wrong one. I don't even know. Oh, man, it's a little rough. Oh, yeah, I guess I can look at what is even coming. Yeah, yeah, what are the three pieces. possibles? Or one possible? Oh, interesting. I'm sorry, I need to go warmer too. I don't know. Wait, they all can. The hunter into play. He's the one who can cycle and add corruption to the active path. Okay, Aragorn. Aragorn, you say. Unless I gotta do it. Elrond, when played, draw one card. And this increases my carry over limit by one. Stormon. Frodo. Frodo will pass with two cards. I'll cycle this guy to add a corruption to the path. Mm -hmm. uh, Aragorn. We're going to add the ring to Elrond. If in reserve, you may use your action and cycle this card so each free people player draws one card. Sormon, I'm going to activate Golem. If on a path, you may use your action to activate a different path of the same number. So that means we'll resolve this. So I have two. So I get two corruption. And he, when he's defeated in path combat, he gets cycled. This I'll take. And then we'll activate another number eight of my choice. I'm going to play Morgul Veil, which will allow the Mordor player, which uh, will draw five cards, and from these play up to one Nazgul, and then cycle the rest. Well, we'll see if I draw into any. Two, three, four, five. I think that, I don't know when it's like, I think I have to resolve this first, I would assume, one thing at a time. Uh, Nazgul. Nope. So cycle the rest, but that will cycle my whole pile. Okay, and then that is Frodo's turn. Frodo will pass. Hmm. The commander. Anyone corruption? Airborne. Use this. If in reserve, you may use your action cycle this card so each free people player draws one card. Okay, that'll cycle this deck.
going to put Grima Wormtongue in play, who's missed his chance to get involved in paths. But if in reserve you may use your action to eliminate this card to either take Sormon from your draw deck into hand, he's gone already, or eliminate a Rohan character of your choice in play. You don't have any, but the threat's there. I don't know if it'll even... What will that do to that card? Eliminate that card yeah. to eliminate a Rohan? Okay. But it's like, if we don't draw a Rohan Battleground for the last round, it kind of doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm just trying to buy time, I think. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Roto. This is for Path 9. If in reserve, you may use your action and cycle this card to take Gandalf the Grey or Gandalf the White from your cycle pile into your hand. They're both dead. We'll just put them there for Path 9. Ooh. Hmm. Let's put out this army for later, hopefully. Aragorn. Aragorn will. I'll just defend with one more. Okay. Get the hand line in there. That's one. Good. One in here too. Um. Okay. Let's. Defend there with all the Dunatain. Alright, let's put two more swords here. Okay, Frodo. Pass. Mm. I'll pass here. Aragorn. Only one. Pass. Sormon. Let's... All right, mm -hmm. check this card. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, well, in reserve, you may use your action to eliminate this card to activate Harad if it's in the Shadow Battleground deck. And it is, so I'll grab it from the deck. I'll shuffle up. And then this one comes into play. And I'm defending it. It says each Shadow player draws one card. I'll draw and draw. Okay. Frodo. Hmm. Means now I have a better chance of that happening, so... Pick 
have to hope for that. It's only my only option. Not even that one. This. Proto will pass. Uh, okay, on to this guy over here. I'll pass. Here, Gorn. Pass. Sormon. Still winning here, right? Mm -hmm. Winning here. Mm -hmm. It's all pass. Okay, that's all of us. Okay. Uh, so here, this guy dies. These guys are eliminated. Deck. I get a point. Woo! Here, I defend this one successfully. I get a point. And this one, I have one corruption, no defense. So I gain another corruption. And there we go. Eliminated. Ready up. Ready up. The nail biter. One, All right, three. first player. There's only one in here that I'll even have a shot at. The other ones, I right, think that's you how got. I feel sometimes. It's like it gets down to the wire, and I'm like, crap, I have nothing left for this battle, but I went too hard earlier. Um, this is going to be, oh, mm -hmm. he'll just draw out his deck, obviously. Yep. So, and when you draw out your deck and cycle pile, uh, you don't touch your eliminated pile, you have to work with what you have left. So I've done, I've been decked both times where I've been down to like only two or three cards because I put way too much in early game. And uh, I've been cycling, like not even cycling, just like sitting there with what's there and like cycling like maybe one or two cards um, at the end. But um, this one over here has one card carried over. He will still get plus two draw. So one, two, three, four, plus the two, six. I'll cycle these ones here, draw and carry over. All right, so Sormon. Oh, well, let me shuffle this just in case you. Please, you no, I didn't. You touched it last. I well, did, but I didn't. Uh, please, please, please. Oh my God, there's only one in here. I even have a shot at winning. The other two, I think, are definitely yours, based on what I can see here. I didn't look at my hand. One, two, time. three, four, five, six. Could all come down to this. That's a six. Or thong. Yes. Okay, it. yes, yes, yes. Damn it, that's yes. not good. That's okay. not good. That's very good. That's very bad for me. That's the only I'm one I thought sure. I had a shot at. Depends on what's in your hand. The but... Isengard player... Yeah, so this will even help me, because I, I saw it too late. The Isengard player may take Sormon from the draw deck or cycle pile. And then the Isengard player, I don't even have a cycle pile left to cycle. Yeah. So this literally gives me no bonus. That really sucks. Okay, it's the only one I had a shot at. Here, let's roll a die. Oh, I did it again. That sucks. Okay, uh, so for here, yeah. one, two, three, four, five, Give six. Give me a two-pointer. Uh, that's a three, so Give this some one. some defense as well. <laughs> I haven't looked at my hands yet, but... The Crack oh. of Doom. The monstrous player draws two cards. Oh, I literally, for you. I literally have no cards. Oh, even better. Uh, so There's yeah, I got, no, I got no bonuses off of these. Holy. And that's a three-pointer. Wow. And a two-pointer. Okay. Um... You're first. So, yeah. Let's see what I can do with my last cards here. Oh, Treebeard 2 you have. That sucks. That's also why I was hoping. Yeah, that really sucks. What do I got in this deck? Cycle. Pro Golem. Frodo.
All these armies built up for nothing. Fuck that, that's. Come on. When played, draw five cards from these. Play one Rohan army and cycle the rest. One, two, three, four, five. I don't even know if I have any at this point. Nope. Oh, feels pretty bad, huh? No, I didn't think I did. <laughs> I didn't think I did. <laughs> Drawing and finding nothing. Feels bad, man. All right. Uh, so well, that was Frodo. This is path nine, eh? Um. I'm going to play, I don't know who these dudes are, but Korbag and Shagrat, who can go on path 8 or 9. When played or moved to a path, you may cycle one card from hand to add a corruption to this card. Or add two if Sirith... Oh, wait. Maybe that's a path 9. Let me just double check. No, it's not. Okay. So, yeah. I'm not missing out on his good one. Uh, okay. So, I'll play him. I can cycle a card. To add a corruption. To this card. Uh, I don't know which one. Whatever. Okay. Um, that is there. Or Aragorn. <laughs> the crack of doom is right there. How many cards do you have in your hands? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the Witch King player has four. Oh, okay. And the Sauron player has five. Dun, dun, dun. I don't think I have this anymore. You're feeling it slip away from your grasp? No, I know it is based on what I got here, but... Okay. What? This is Swarmon. Yeah, again, I put all these orange guys in, <laughs> and they're just sitting there snoozing. That always frustrates me. But... I didn't realize, because I don't think we really got to Path 9 very often, that those were worth three points. Oh, I didn't realize it was oh, yours Oh, yeah, either. thank you for reminding me. I will do this action to activate a path of a different number. So I have one, two on here, so I gain two corruption. Mm -hmm. I get this stolen from you. This is gone. These guys, he gets cycled. This guy's eliminated. Hopefully the other ones are worth three. Yeah, I'll activate more guy. I can add a corruption to this path. Mm -hmm. Okay. Frodo. Oh yeah, this is cycled. Pretty sure that's how it works. All right, I'm digging. I think. Am I digging? Am I digging? So I don't know how that works. If I cycle something and I have no deck, it says every time your deck's empty, you're supposed to cycle. So I feel like the first card, I don't know what it was. I don't know, maybe I can look, actually. Yeah, so this would go into my deck, I think, right away as soon as I have a cycle pile. I don't know, that's a weird one. And then this one would be cycled. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's a weird, weird game state, but... I'm sorry, there's one of those... I can do that so because of that. Uh, that's this guy.
Okay. Let's. Okay, let's see here. Mm. Good. Okay, I uh, see. All right, I'm going to play this. Put in the hunter into play. Aragorn. I'm going to forsake these two cards to draw a card. I will. We're attacking with two here, and I have two defense. So. I'm going to use Grima Wormtongue uh, to eliminate him to eliminate a Rohan character from play. Proto? Blocking one. Mm -hmm. I will cycle this to add a corruption here. Mm -hmm. I think. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to play him again anyway. Yeah, that's, I can't play that. There is a rule in the game you can't play the same card in the same round if I could cycle him back. And I'm actually at the point where I have some tricks to get that Nazgul back. But I don't know if there's another Nazgul in here, but I won't be able to play him again. Okay, that's fine. Still got something out of it. All right, Aragorn. And that was the Hunter. Don't let me play the Hunter again if you see him. He'll pass. Okay. Um, I'm going to, if in reserve, you may use your action to eliminate this card to reactivate a Southron Battleground. So I'll eliminate this guy, and I'll reactivate this one from my pile, which actually loses me a point, because it's now back in play. I just want to reactivate one of yours, so I think you'll just win it anyway, and they all have good bonuses for you. Uh, so this one says, each shadow player draws a card. Okay, now we have this one to fight over, which Sothron, Dunedain, and Elves can go here. Um, Proto? Proto will pass for now. We'll play an event. If uh, I'm going to play the Black Captain, so if the Witch King is in reserve, activate or reactivate any Mordor background, uh, battleground, then you may move the Witch King to that battleground, even if the Witch King was played this round. So this will be eliminated. I'm going to activate uh, this one from my battleground pile. Uh, does it say where exactly from? Oh, I guess I want it from my pile, so I get bonuses, right? <laughs> probably your pile probably is not. The Mortar player draws five cards from these, may play up to one army, then cycles the rest. A little risky because you can go crazy with attacking with all of your things, but I'm going to one, 
cycle. One, two, three, four. I'm going to play one army. Yep, yep. We'll just play that army to here for defense and cycle the rest. All right. Aragorn. Pass. Uh, Sormon. Let's go. Right-handed orcs. Frodo. I have to eliminate that one. No. And he has plus one here. Hmm. Uh, you have three against two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorma. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I definitely messed up. Uh, this says, when played, each shadow... Uh, sorry, this card cannot be played or moved to a path if a shadow battleground is active. Oh. Oh, but one was active, like, right from the start, right? This is mine. This mm -hmm. is mine. This is mine. Yeah, yeah. so, like, I saved this for using it on path nine. Oh. It does tell me the carryover limit, but I definitely messed up there. Like, how would that not have been a Shadow Battleground? Because I feel like the last two... Oh, because you skipped the, the round skip, so yeah. the path didn't line up with the Battlegrounds. So you messed me up on the little side. No, but I feel like the last two, I don't know if we, we can look at that after, but it's I feel fine. like the eights and the nines are both benefiting you and not me. No, but I'm talking about Battlegrounds. Yeah. Like, I want to put this guy in path nine, Yeah. but I'm not allowed if, if one of my Battlegrounds is out. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. Like, so I don't this... think you could have done it for eight or nine. You had to do it before Well, he seven. can't go on an eight, but yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, he's only And this nine. guy can't either. This card cannot be played or moved to a... a I should have done him before, too. I, I totally if brain farted on these. I should have used them, like, previous rounds, but it's fine. I didn't know what Battleground was going to come I think up, you're so. going to win anyway. I know, I know, but it's like, I'm just showing that, like, I am definitely not playing correctly, this is for sure. Uh, okay, so... This guy's allowed to move. They'll just go there uh, to add to corruption. Yes. Uh, this is here. You have one more card there on your under your hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Proto. So thrown. Pass. Okay. Uh, this thing can do there. Over here, I'll just pass. Tell oh. everyone, I think. Well, no, I played one for oh, this sorry. guy. So it gets back to him then. Uh, yeah, I'll just forsake off the top to play there, or whatever. Okay, done, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so here I get one point. This guy successfully defends. He would get cycled. Whatever. This one here, I fully defended. These guys get cycled, not eliminated, because no one was there to stab them. Two points. Mm -hmm. Here, uh, you're this coming in with two attack. Three. Oh, three, three plus, plus one, one yeah. yes. So you win this one, um, and those guys are eliminated. And you get two from that. Okay. This one I have four corruption, but one, one gets one. blocked. So one, two, three corruption. <laughs> dead. And this guy's eliminated. These are gone. And this goes face down to my score pile. Mm -hmm. And there we are. We total up the score and I got 21 to 16. When we count it up, we add no rings. All no. the rings were spent. First time I've seen that. Uh, but normally, if any of these were still flipped up, we would be adding one point in for each ring. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, that was tense AF. 
Uh, yeah, my I was doing what you were doing. I was drawing into like Sormon cards that uh, oh. I was like, should I do the elimination? But I know I have like only Golem in here, but he's not even allowed to be played again. Oh, so I was yeah. like, uh, it's just a waste. But um, there was a moment. So I just want to want to go back now that the game is finished. And there was a moment when I put Sormon on that location. You had the Strider there to like pop and pull the next one in. You messed me up so hard. I was setting up for path six. Big plays on path six. I had this guy path six. I was going to do another path six to get a bonus off of it Sorry. to do some good stuff. So I've, yeah. been, I've been cycling this guy, holding this guy, carrying over this guy to play him on path six to activate it to get some cool effects to help me like get in get in there i had this in hand i was going to play this on sormon first before moving him i finally got it back i dug for this so that way he would not be eliminated i could get him and all of his attachments back bring them into play later to get my card draw back up get my carryover limit back up and be able to do that draw three cards eliminate one and cycle one yeah but you pushed me like you had the strider play there about pushing to the next one. And I was like, I can't let you do it. I just have to get him in because you'll bring it to path seven. Stormon can't go on anything about paths like five or six. So then he's just sitting there and I would have been good, actually, because I would have kept drawing more. I should have just kept him because then I could use him on that yellow combat that just happened at the end. So it, overall, it wasn't that bad, but it did hurt me. And I was like, crap. Um, so you forced my hand. So now I'm sitting with dead cards and drawing through them because... Now, this guy can't do Jack other than be in a fight, so he could have helped there at the end. Um, but but you, he needs an army with him. Yes, exactly, and you eliminate that army, which I, I was waiting for you to drop Treebeard on something. No, I, but I, I, I knowing I could have just kept passing until yeah. you put something in. And then I eventually just, because of fatigue, I just forgot about Treebeard being there, so I just dropped it in. But I was holding him like, he's still useful, but... Um, and then I had this, too, uh, which, if Sormon's in reserve, so I wanted to get him back off the cloak, and I was holding this cool event... So that I could uh, activate or reactivate an Isengard battleground, pull some out of your score pile, and try to go hard on them with those yellow armies I still had in my deck. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, then we drew a yellow army card, so it's like ah, like I had to use them for something else anyway. But that whole Sormon being eliminated without his uh, without his winter jacket on, <laughs> um, you know, to to handle the the, the cold out there, um, it, it sucked. So you, doing that Strider play, like really, like oh, like frustrated me so much. I was like. No, I have so many cards I'd rather play on Sauron, but I was like, oh, I'll just put them in and maybe you won't pop him right away. Then I can stick the coat on him quick. But then you're like, I'm going to do this now. And then you were like, I don't know if this is a good play. And that's why I was like, this is a bad play. It's a bad play. Well, the only, reason, like, ah. the only reason I even did it was because I had Faramir out that could trigger two path sevens. Oh, so I was yes, like, then yes, I yes, can, yes, I might play. move a tiny bit here, but I'll no, gain on both play. of the path sevens. Yeah, and then push it forward one, and, I like and then the way, I was—I like the way it shakes up the 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 rounds, like it shortens the rounds. No, we didn't have one each. Yeah, left. but I like sometimes we end and there's nothing in here. Right. Sometimes we end and there's still a couple left in the other one, and like you never know what the final battle is gonna like, what armies are gonna be involved. So sometimes like you sometimes you hold mm -hmm. off on factions and you're not sure like if they're gonna be useful later or not. Yeah, eight and nine are both benefits to you, not me. Well, because so you're I in thought, my area. I know, but you're I thought... You're on your way to Mount Doom, like, you're in the bad guy's backyard. Like, obviously, it's going to be dark I know, and doomed and, and But horrible. I was hoping that Path 9 was a benefit to me, but it wasn't. Oh, oh which sucks. So then I pushed it to, to benefit you two paths in a row, and then I had no benefits after that. I shouldn't have maybe done that. Maybe. Because I could have probably went harder on that yeah. Path 6. Which is part of the fun, like, that we've been, played this now, like, six times, and we're still, like, not... Sure, figuring out strategies like we've both gotten better i think um at like being prepared for what the other person can do but there's still that gamble of like what could show up when mm -hmm. do i put this in now are you holding that card are you not holding that card do you even want to put that card in now or are you holding it for some better turn later like this whole ebb and flow is nuts it's freaking nuts and i love it i love it i love it i love it uh again prototype copy <laughs> this is me just gushing six plays in, still having fun. I love card games, you guys know that. I love Lord of the Rings theme. I love War of the Ring, the board game. I love two-player card games. I come from a background of playing them at tournaments and getting really deep into two-player games. I love battling against another human opponent versus AI, playing solo games and co-op games and that stuff. I love the competitive game. I love it, love it, love it. So keep that in mind of all the good things I say. But also keep that in mind, the bad things I say. So I'm going to talk about, about the game, um, give our thoughts. But before we do that, I want to go over the modes in the game. 
So we just played trilogy mode that can be played from two to four players. This is the main mode or the main scenario that is taught in the book. And if I quickly jump to the very end of the book, uh, we'll get to the scenarios. So again, at the start of the rule book, it just explains, but they demoed the trilogy scenario and the trilogy scenario is the way the rule book is taught. Yeah. And it says for four players, we're going to teach you the four player rules for the trilogy scenario, but it tells you right at the start of the rule book, if you want to play with less than four players or play a different mode, these rules still matter. Just go to the back and read the scenarios that change setup, what the ring token does, how many cards you draw, what cards are in your decks, all that stuff. So for example, uh, we play the trilogy mode here, which says the trilogy mode is designed to be played by two teams of two players each, or fewer than four if you're playing, the same way provides the most complete game experience. And I just want to say, I'll, I'll, I'll have something to add to that, but the two player duel, so there's another version right here. It says the two player duel offers quicker setup and game time than the trilogy scenario when there are just two players. The three player duel is a variant of the scenario playable with three players. Then there's a fellowship of the ring scenario, which is a short two player game, great for teaching new players and when time is limited. That's the one I debated doing and showing this game off with was just the basic one. But we kept playing the trilogy and the two player duel uh, in our previous games. I was like, I kind of get it. Let's just show off the trilogy scenario. Because it, it'll let two, it'll let four player, three player, and two players know how the game like right. generally works in the default mode. But there is a two player duel, a three player duel, and the Fellowship of the Ring, um, and and how those work. So the trilogy two player duel and three player duel scenarios use every path and battleground included. The Fellowship of the Ring scenario uses uh, the location cards instead. So there is a set deck of location cards that makes a shorter, limited, thematic game. If you're going to play the fellowship scenario so you can like set that up and just pull it out and play every time if you want like a quicker game we recommend using the turn order track when using the three player duel or trilogy scenario with less than four players use the side with the tracker matching the scenario you're playing note the decks are named after important characters from the story but there is no other significance to the names so for example uh if you're playing the trilogy scenario starting player in turn order you just saw that was frodo followed by the witch king aragorn and the Sormon. so that's locked in and then there is the type of cards you put in your deck. Remember, they all have the same backs for the free people's player cards, no matter which deck they go in, because they can change based on the duel. Same with the shadow player. So we just saw it in setup for the, the regular mode, uh, or trilogy mode, I should say. It's trilogy scenario is, is each player draws seven cards, then must cycle two of them, leaving a hand of five. In draw step, we saw free people's player draws three cards, shadow draws four. The ring token, you can flip it once. You lose that one point at the end of the game if you even get to the end of path nine. Um, to draw two cards and it tells you basically when you're playing with less players like we just did every time it talks about a player it's directed at the deck so if it's each free people's player draws cards you just draw them from the each deck talks about the ring token uh, then there's the two-player duel again if you guys are interested in seeing us play this two-player duel it's fun um, we can do another stream where we just play the two-player duel mode to show that off um, but it's basically you just have a Gandalf player which has all the free people's cards you jam both 30 card decks together, shuffle them up, and you're now playing with a 60 card free people's deck. The Witch King player has all the shadow cards, okay? Setup though is different. Gandalf just draws four cards, Witch King draws six. No cycling, just draw and deal with it. During the draw step though, the Gandalf player gets to draw four cards instead of three each deck, and the Witch King player draws six. So it's a little different. Each player starts with one ring token, which can be used once per round, not once per game. And then there's the difference for path scoring. So this variant was designed by Roberto, who, who worked on this game, who also worked on War of the Ring, um, the board game. And he added in this stuff here, path scoring. After path combat, the Gandalf player only places the path in the scoring area if the, the total path defense icons exceeds the corruption icons. If they're the same number, neither side gets the path. So it's now a little harder. So there must be a balance thrown there, uh, making the... Free people's play are a little stronger, so they make the path a little harder for them. And now the, the ring token, once per round is an action, you can use a ring token to draw the top three cards of your deck, eliminate one, cycle one, and keep one in hand. Okay, and you flip it, and then it resets at the end of each round. So this helps you with the variance of playing a 60 card deck. Helps you dig for those pieces, but then you're having to make that tough choice like I was with the Palantir, eliminating a card, cycling a card, keeping a card, which sometimes can be a little rough. 
So uh, I just want to also add that here's Roberto who designed the dual mode, who also worked on War of the Ring, added this note. Aries Games sent me the link to this just to say, keep in mind, this is the way it was designed, was with this in mind. So Roberto says, I'll add one note. During development, I designed the dual scenario. While apparently it is very similar, rules differences are just amount of card draws, use of the ring token, and resolving ties. It plays quite differently. With 60 cards instead of 30 in the deck, you have less control, so the game has higher randomness. That, of course, you need to learn how to tame. Certain card effects become less powerful, others become more powerful. I find a little lighter overall than the normal trilogy game with four players, but not less enjoyable. I 100% agree with all of what he just said. We have played the dual scenario. Yep. Uh, I like it better. It's a little more crazy, but I love it when you're drawing seven cards with those events. You're digging into the deck, finding things, eliminating things or like it, it's it just has a whole different feel to it and you'll place a bunch of things in reserve knowing they're good later like because you know you might not cycle them as fast so now the reserve in play matters a lot more i feel and uh yeah i like it i like the dual deck because i don't have to manage two hands so i just love jamming all the cards together not having to sort them just take your 60 cards shuffle them up and start playing i feel it's quicker that way uh there's less trying to figure out whose turn it is uh, which hand should I be looking at? Crap. Uh, I was mentally focused on this deck. Now I have to mentally switch to this deck. Then you kind of forget what was in the cycle pile of the other. But one of the beauties of the game when you're playing full four player, which we have, is just managing your little 30 card deck and knowing what's in the cycle, knowing what's in the eliminated, knowing what's in your deck. Because as you play, you just get really used to what's there yeah. and you're really good planning and a lot of tight strategy. Um, and I find mentally myself is just having to manage one deck in the dual player mode, even though it's 60, I still know what's in my cycle pile. I still know what's in my eliminated. I have an idea what's in my deck. You know, I just have to manage one hand. I prefer it. Even though it's a little lighter, I prefer it. But if I ever have three or four players, I would probably choose the trilogy mode so far from what we played. I still have fun playing what we just played, but I don't like managing two hands. It's a little weird. It still works. It's still fun. Yeah. I loved what we just played. I loved every time I played this game. But when we played the duel... I was like, all right, I just have to keep my my focus on one deck of cards. Super fun, like build up all the armies in play, kind of pick when to move them in. Um, lots of card draw. The effects are a little different. It's fun when you're digging for cards a little more out of a 60 card deck because you know you like you think you wouldn't hit it as often, but I feel sometimes you actually hit more, it felt like, but it, that's just the randomness, I guess. Um, but yeah. Um, what else do we want to talk about? So, oh yeah, so then the other mode, sorry, let's go back to the other mode. There is, um, there is ways to deal with the three players, but then there's this Fellowship of the Ring mode, which you actually have a specific, uh, I've not played this mode, but there's no. starting player and turn order is a little different. You actually have specific, um, cards in the deck. So you, you have to actually go, like, I would set this up if I was demoing this game or teaching new players if they're coming over to have a new player game night and I just want to teach this game and not make it take too long. You have to actually go through and, like, set up the decks to give to the players. This is a two-player one, though, so I would, like, be teaching one player or demoing it at a convention or a board game store. I would set these up to make a little thematic shorter game. And this is probably how I should have taught it on stream. But you just set it up and there's like specific rules, specific battlegrounds and paths you're playing with. And it only goes to path six max. Oh, I see. Um, and the draw steps a little the, the same. Gandalf player just draws three. Balrog player draws four. The ring tokens not used to keep it a little more simple. You know, you're teaching. You don't, you just want to have them understanding the abilities and stuff. So this exists if you just want to have a short little pre-canned game and you're just playing that, you know. Yeah. I'm assuming it's pretty balanced. I would hope that you could play that over and over again and kind of like it would be more of a tighter, shorter game. Um, so yeah, so, uh, any questions? I see Peter has a question in chat, says, which variant does Mel prefer? I actually prefer the variant we just played with managing two decks. I find it's, once you get the hang of the, what's in the decks, it's not hard. And I, I think I can, I enjoy it better. I think you can manage them better. Your effects trigger a little bit more than if you mash them together because Looking through five cards, you may not find what you need. Um, I like that they cycle faster as well. So those mm. cards, you can use them more often in a game. Which, which, So I, I like this one better, but it does take a little bit of practice. Like the first time I played it, I was like, whoa, that's a lot. Yeah. But then as you play yeah. it more and more, you kind of get used to it. And the first time we didn't play with the round tracker, we were just kind of playing 
and going, oh, it's this deck, this deck. But this round tracker definitely yeah, we helps were just manage. Like, we were, we were passing like, just a token to keep track of whose yeah. turn it is and who's next. But then, yeah. yeah, I was like, okay, let's use this and see. So since using this, I like this uh, four-player variant down to two players better. I like this. Yeah. At first, I hated it. I was like, this is dumb that they even put this two-handed <laughs> version. Why yeah. even bother? But there are so many solo or cooperative players that play two-handed that I know who watch the channel and are in the industry that that are in this hobby, I should say, that love playing two-handed games. No problem. They don't care. Yeah. So it is fun, but we're just comparing it at a two-player point of view. If what would you prefer playing this trilogy mode at two-player or the four-player version you played? Okay. Well, if you could just say <laughs> uh, magically have four players at the table or just two players at the table, and I told you tonight we're playing trilogy mode. Would you want to make two players appear magically to play those other two decks at the table? Or would you just be fine playing it and you think that's better to control two? Selfishly, I like to control two because I know what's happening in both decks, so, right? When you play with four players, you're relying on someone else to do what you hope is the right thing or they think is the right thing. So I want you guys so. to all understand that. If Mel could make any of you come and play with us, she thinks she's better than you no. and you won't run the other deck as well as she will. So no, there you go. You had selfishly, it. Mel's evil, I told you. But selfishly this is what I mean like selfishly like so I might be holding and especially because I find that the free people's decks kind of mesh better and have attachments that go on the other decks where yours I don't find do that as much right your decks don't mesh together so it doesn't really matter the only way they kind of mesh quote unquote is when uh, I see a battleground where they can get involved on the same battleground because then I can use effects on like the Nazgul to add swords to those other battlegrounds if they need to help and stuff like that. But like, there's no items that really right. So for so across. for me, I might have an item in the Aragorn deck that attaches to a Hobbit, which is in the free people or in the uh, Frodo deck, and I know I have a Hobbit. But if I'm playing with somebody else, I don't know they have the Hobbit, so I don't but know you to can hold ask and it wait. Loud. Yeah, but then and I'm then the giving more information to the fine. other two players, right? You so just say, you that's why I'm saying selfishly, I like yeah. to control both decks because I know what I have in my hands and I can play accordingly. So. <laughs> yeah, you could totally ask uh, other players at the table, but again, the open information, you hear it. Uh, one thing I want to say about the game itself, some nitpicks. I, I like to do a little nitpicky stuff. I know the game's not final yet, but uh, one thing that's kind of annoying, at least in our prototype, they might fix this later. Maybe there's plans for this stuff. I, I don't know if the developers of Overwatch or the Ares games people watch, but after playing it now six times, one thing that's annoying, because we don't have all the cards memorized, so let's say, okay. let's say uh, there's tons of locations in this game, right? There's tons of battlegrounds, tons of paths. I can never remember how many defense are on each one, how many points, how many, uh, who's the defenders, and who is the attackers, okay? I know if you probably memorize the entire books and, and you know them off by heart, you might know who is going to fight at where and which path comes after which. Obviously, if you played this like 100 times, you'll just memorize them all, I'm sure. But if, you, if you're if you like me and you play other games all the time and you don't think that's important information to remember going forward, your brain just doesn't store it. Uh, but on these, so you're supposed to put your score pile like so as you get it. And, you know, some of them are face down the paths or whatever uh, on my side. The annoying part is because I don't have it all memorized. We constantly have to keep looking through each other's score piles, which is totally open. You're supposed to do that. So if I'm reading an effect that says reactivate a Mordor battleground, I can reactivate it from or activate or reactivate. I could activate from here. I could activate from here. I could have activate from Mel's score pile or my score pile. The annoying part is this game does not come with a dial to keep score. So there is no way in default in the box for me to know how many points Mel has easily. You are supposed to stack them according to them. You're supposed to stack them like this, you know, as you score points. And I would have corruption tokens, right, all on the table. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to be able to, at a glance, count all this. And, of course, you'll be asking, how many points do you Every have? Every round we were doing it's that. It's so annoying. Yeah. I've played enough competitive card games. I should not have to ask my opponent, what is this your score? What is your score? What is, and interrupt their thought process. And you think, okay, they're on the table. You can see them, right? Not everyone can see them, especially playing four player. Your score pile is in one place. And these tiny little numbers are here. But also, if you notice, I'm showing this score. I can't see who the defenders and attackers are. I can't even see the name and the location. I think it would be super awesome, gameplay-wise, if they want to keep the score this way and not give you a dial to keep the score. They really should put across the top should be the name of the location and all the symbols, right? So at a glance, I can at least look across. Oh, Peter, thank you for becoming Peter. a producer. Thank you so, Peter, so much. Thank you for clicking the join button down below and supporting the channel. Much appreciated. Thank you for supporting our work here. Thank you. And just a note, Peter does say, yeah, great stream. Let's all join the channel now.
I appreciate Peter, it. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, I didn't say it out, out front, but I did say full disclosure. I thought it was implied. Uh, this game was sent to us from Aries Games. We do not pay for it, but they are not paying us to play this today or anything. All, all the work to creating streams, learning the game, playing it was all us. We appreciate the support from all our Patreons and YouTube members for allowing us to do this and not have to be paid by publishers to make videos and kind of do what they say kind of thing. So uh, we appreciate having the freedom to play the games we want and talk about the games we want fully openly with no pressure. Um, yeah, I don't care. Even though they gave us this demo, I appreciate it, but I'm still going to rip on things about the game I don't like. So thank you, Peter. Uh, uh, thank you, Peter, very much for the support, allowing us to continue to do this um, here. So I can see the points. I wish across the top it showed you the location name and which factions were involved defending and, and um, attacking so quickly without letting my opponent know that I need to grab their discard pile and look through it. Now when I pick up this discard pile and I start to look through it, well, of course I'm looking through it. Now we have to sort it again, especially when we got late in the game. Look at Mel's pile. So every time I need to go through Mel's pile, I'm doing this. I'm going, and then you're also letting me know you have an ability or something yep, that can pull something out. Yep, which is annoying. And then I have to give it back to her and sort it all again like <laughs> this so we can see the points, okay? So again, a few things that I feel gameplay-wise that would help gameplay be smooth and help with the sneakiness uh, is put the name, the attackers, defenders, so at a glance I can know if a location's already been used, I can know if a Dunedain location's in there, or a Mordor location or a Shadow location yeah. is in your score pile or in my score pile at a quick glance. I agree, 100%. That way I could still see the points. I wish there was a dial with big numbers on it, kind of like the dial from the old Lord of the Rings LCG that quickly showed how much uh, quest points you have or whatever. We could just pull those from that game and use them in this okay. game. But this game is 2022. Games that need dials or, or need a way to quickly know the score, uh, especially a score that is literally checked every round. Yes. And it's a score that you want to know as the other player whether I should worry right now or whether I should try to push for those final two points because I can get up on you by 10 yeah. and win the game. But the fact that I have to keep asking you, uh, how many points do you have over there? How many points do you have over there? Or I could pick it up and count them, mm -hmm. but then I have to put them down again so you can see them. Otherwise, I just put them down like this, and now you don't know. Yeah. Yes, of course it can be solved if you own 100 dials from other games, <laughs> or if you own dice, or if you own pencil and paper, or if you own an app that you can keep track, you know, if you can, you count it on a stream like yeah. this. Oh, no. No, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. Um, obviously there's solutions, but there should be in the box a beautiful little dial for each faction, or one dial that has two scoop numbers yeah. on it, and one side has shadow art, you know, the eye of, of Sauron. One side has the ring or the fellowship art on it or something. And it just tracks your score. So the players quickly at a glance don't need to interrupt each other and, and grab each other's discard piles and look through them. And if the dial was there and if the graphic design was better on the locations, um, I think that would be smoother and lead to a more enjoyable play experience and game. I agree. Um, so those are two, uh, they could be nitpicks, but it's literally, I've wasted much time sorting through cards and putting them back nicely, sorting through them again. It's very frustrating. Very frustrating. So other than playing two-handed, which annoys me personally, it may not annoy you. Doesn't annoy me. And this little nitpick of graphic design, but again, this is a prototype. So they might have already solved this. There might be a dial coming in the final game or two dials to, or four dials. Uh, no, it's we only, only two, need two Yeah, Yeah, you only need two, right? Yeah. Um, other than that, I don't really have any complaints. Like the gameplay is fun. Yep. The effects are fun. It's card game wackiness and stuff that I love. Sneaky events, characters that that do trickery things, multi-use cards. The character can be used on the path. He can be used with an army. He can go on a battleground. He can be eliminated, cycled, do some cool effect. Uh, played from hand, he has an ability. This he could be played on a battleground, have an ability. Could have an ability from reserve. Uh, there's a, you could be discarded or cycled just to play a different card. Like there's so many choices in the puzzles of what's in your hand and where they should go and what time during the game. It has that War of the Ring board game feel of like, ooh, should I really focus on this battle now? Should I focus on corrupting Frodo now? Or should I just let Frodo go and let the other player have a false sense of security and really focus here? Or, you know, you move some armies around and then I'm like, ha, I don't really want to go there. I'm going to go here. 
Like it has that in this game. Like, haha, you're putting armies on that battleground. I don't even care. I'm gonna react. I'm gonna activate a different battleground. I'm gonna fight there because yeah. I don't care about that one. Ha ha ha. Like it has that in this game, and I love that. So yeah, so far six plays of a prototype. Whatever that's worth should be worth a grain of salt. Uh, I love this game. But, uh, yeah, just a few things they could fix. But for a cheap War of the Ring themed card game, if the price that you guys were saying is true, how cheap this game could be, it is just paper and some cardboard tokens and some cards, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's definitely, uh, I don't know. We still have, again, played it six times. Yeah. And I still want to play it more and more and get used to the locations and get used to the strategies and play the dual modes and try the fellowship mode and like play with four players. I want to play this game with four players again. That was so fun at Gen Con. Um, and especially playing with four players who know what their deck does, what their teammates deck does, what the other side could do. And once you get to learn these battleground and path decks better and kind of like the ebb and flow... Oh man, yeah, that would be a great experience. So like replayability and the like, if you're trying to master like this game, like it's simple to learn. I feel like it's tough to master, and there's a lot of discovery, which is great in a base game. I'm sure, as every card game like this, it's probably open for expansions. I mean, it's Lord of the Rings, right? It's Ares games. Like they have expansions for the Ring, the board game. I'm sure if this game does well enough, we'll see expansions for that. We've all played Sword and Sorcery that comes out with like six expansions, like um, for each each box kind of idea. But um, yeah, I don't know. Any other questions? Uh, any other questions related to War of the Ring, the card game? Okay, so again, fi final thing. If you have any comments, questions, leave them in the down below. I'll, I'll try to answer them if I can, uh, as long as it's within a reasonable time after this, because if I start going to play other games, I'll totally forget <laughs> how this game works. Um, but if you guys are interested in seeing us play the dual mode on a stream in the next couple weeks, let us know in the comments below. Hit the like button to help other people find this video. If if this video just gets like enough views or share this video somewhere, people might be interested in watching it. Um, or if you have any friends that might be interested in a game like this to play it with you, send them the video, show them the game. Um, but the, if this gets like a decent amount of views or, you know, gets watched a lot, we might just do it because maybe there's interest for it. But maybe there's not. Maybe this is enough. You get the idea how the damn game works. I have other games to go play. Uh, plenty of other games to go play. More games on the way to play. I'm definitely falling behind. Um, so I'm okay not playing another one. I'm just going to wait for the final version of this. But if you guys really want to see us play the dual mode, jamming the two decks together, maybe we can even switch sides. We can play again. And, and, you know, and it would be just a shorter stream. I feel like that game goes quicker. It does go quicker, yeah. Because there's less jumping between two hands and figuring out whose turn it is and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, just let us know in the comments below if you're interested and you want to see more. If you don't, that's fine. I've never played the Shadow player yet. So I know that might we, be a thing. We were just trying to get really good with our yeah. cards so we didn't stumble on rules and stuff. Yeah, and uh, knowing what's in our deck and what could come out. Yeah. yeah. So but yeah, that might be a thing. Hopefully we did a good job teaching how the game works, showing you how it plays. That was the goal today. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully the couch is comfy tonight. Um, well, that's the thing with this game. I feel like I feel like there's a line that if the free people don't win by a certain point, there's not, not that there's not no not chance, true. but even I think even Roberto said the same thing. Like if oh, it gets to a point, yeah, that you can, you have a lot more later path cards that can generate a lot of corruption on the path later. Yeah. And if I don't close out, cause he even said that at one point, like if you don't have oh, this, we're in that. trouble when you guys are playing. Yeah. Interesting. So I think there's like a balance there. And if you don't get it, then you're just trying to hold out for the path nine, hope you win strategy versus the 10 over. Interesting. I don't know. I mean, we could try again to see, but yeah, I don't know. Have we ever been ahead of on our sh of our shelf of opportunity? Uh, We've always had yeah. games on our. No, shelf. I think we have. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It, those times when I start emailing publishers and start ordering board games. Yeah, we still have some on our shelves we haven't played. Not usually that I care to play. Oh, okay. Care to play is different. So then. shelf of opportunity <laughs> for me, since we play games on YouTube. I don't care if I haven't played every game in my collection, but there are certain games that I want to stream very much. Sometimes those games, I lose interest on streaming them, or they're not relevant anymore, or I found something better, or my interest has just changed, right? So 
my shelf of opportunity is like, do there's games that I want to play with friends and family, not on stream or myself. Uh, but I don't care about that. So if we're just okay. talking, most people only care about games we play on the channel because you're selfish and that's what, what you think. Um, just kidding. Uh, yes, there have been times where I literally look at the pile of games that I originally wanted to stream and or play, and I'm like, you know what? I don't want to play that game on stream anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't care about that game. I don't care about that game. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Um, and then what I'll do is, we'll either A, look at the Kickstarters coming. If none of them are coming soon, I will then start looking at placing board game orders or reaching out to other publishers for other games that are coming out and asking, do you have a press copy and that kind of stuff. Um, that has happened a couple times, but lately that's not a problem we have. So lately it's it's worse than it's ever been. Yeah. Because Gen Con was awesome. Because we're now above like the 15k subscribers. And like I said to Mel, I said if we ever, when we were at like 6k, you get ignored a lot. Nobody cares. You get to 8k. Okay, some people notice. But that 10k number, I told you and I showed you, as soon as I got to 10k, all of a sudden a few more publishers that ignored us, they start reaching out. So we hit 15k i'm like you're gonna see mel wait till we hit 20 but like i literally almost daily uh, i'm getting emails from publishers that aren't just junky publishers or publishers that never made a game before who I, i've never heard of now we're getting emails like i'm ignoring companies and they're still e emailing and i'm telling them i'm not interested and i'm getting them now reaching out with newer games and stuff which is cool so I appreciate the support, like like I've said from the beginning, growing the channel does help the channel grow in, in so many ways, even by just watching, subscribing, liking, um, it has helped us, because again, there's like a bajillion board game YouTubers, is, is like, like, a new one comes out every day, right, but um, I'm still trying to do my own thing, do our niche thing here, have our own community, be a unique place on, on YouTube, and I like doing it my own way, that's why it's Rob's Gaming Table. And uh, yeah, so the game, the pile is getting higher because literally like even yesterday I got an email saying originally this publisher said I probably wouldn't, uh, you know, they'll let me know. And they kind of were like at Gen Con, like, mm. ah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we're not really looking for anything right now. I said, OK, no problem. Here's my business card. Like, I just want to say hi. It's all good. Have a great day. And today I get a follow-up email like, uh, yeah, remember all those games you said you're interested in? Yeah, are you okay if we send you four of them? <laughs> and I'm going to have to reply and say, we probably don't have time for like two of them, maybe. I can take these two and that kind of stuff. So it's a good problem to have, but yes. Uh, I, we've never been this uh, bad before. Uh, or this busy. Or this busy, yeah. yeah. So we're going to keep just trucking through it. And uh, yeah, so we're busy. So again, so stay tuned because there's lots of good stuff yeah, coming. Yeah, lots of games to play. Lots of games to play. Mm -hmm. So lots of content. Um, yeah, we just got to get through it. So stay tuned. You're in the right place. But yeah, it's just interesting. It's just interesting. Yeah. So yeah, the shelf of opportunity you guys are saying has there ever not been a problem, but it's like, no, it's not been like this before, yeah. um, which is cool. So it's going to be a busy few months. So that should be fun. Fun for you guys too, hopefully. 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 But then if it's all games that they don't care about, then it's not going to be fun. I'm just joking. But we have lots of different... Uh, we have variety. Yeah, we definitely have different pockets yeah. of viewers on the channel that only show up for certain types of games and stuff. So it's fun. Yeah. It's fun to be able to do different stuff. Um, but yeah, Daniel, we have been ahead a few times. Yes. Uh, Darren's saying, I know it's comparing apples and oranges. Would you rather sit down and play this or the board game? That's big time apples and oranges. There is so many caveats that come into play with each one it's like how many hours do we have how many how many how much time do we have to relearn either one like yeah. uh yeah i don't know i think for me i would probably say this and the reason being i can play this a couple times get used to the decks again get used to what my factions are doing and then play a semi game game that is like balanced right where it's kind of back yeah. and forth where if the other ones are so big and epic it takes so long to learn them and yeah uh i would never choose because both are such app like apples and oranges yeah. like uh i would want both because uh i don't always want to take a few days off to like try to relearn war during the, the board yeah. game and then uh, try to get back to the rules. And both people in the game have to get back in the rules well, or else you're going to have a really one-sided, horrible game. Exactly. I love War of the Ring. I love the experience the couple times we've played it. I want to play it again. It takes a long is, time. That is like a whole different world. 
I love the theme of War of the Rings, or Lord of the Rings, sorry, so much. I'm just happy to have another game that plays different, like a competitive game. It, and this is not to replace the board game. No, it's not to replace the board game. No. But it's for fans who like seeing the same characters and stuff and want to compete and, and, and say the same terms and locations and have that feeling of battling the trilogy out. And it, which is different than the zoomed in weird scenarios that are in Lord of the Rings, Journeys of the Middle Earth, the adventure game. Like it's different than the cooperative nature of that game or the cooperative nature of Lord of the Rings, the living card game. Like those are all fit different niches. But I don't know, like it's its own thing. It's its own thing. It fits a different value. It fits a different budget. It fits a different play time. It fits a different uh, complexity. It fits a different amount of learning uh, I don't know what you call it, time spent learning the game. Like, some people don't even want to touch a, the, you know, that what we could call a rule book for War of the Ring, but it's just like a document full of rules. Like, it's, I don't know, it's, it's tough to learn that game. Um, it also plays at four players. So does that game, and you play, I think, in team mode. There's oh. a team mode to it, I believe. Oh, I didn't even know that. But again, it's just like Rebellion. Star Wars Rebellion has that too, and oh. I've never read it because I don't even want to read no. it. No, like, like I don't know who, why anyone would want to do that. Yeah, I don't know. You control like certain armies each, and there's like some slightly modified rules, I think, if it's like Rebellion, but <laughs> okay. it's like those, yeah. They just put that to sell more copies to say there's four players on the side of the box, so it sells more. Yeah. But you never should I would love to games. hear the person that says they actually play it like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Velko saying, same problem I have with War of the Ring and Star Wars Rebellion. If you don't have an experienced opponent, it's not fun. Yeah, it's, it's like one-sided. And, and then and it's boring for the person that's losing. Same thing with Cloud Spire from Chip Theory. is like It takes so long to set up, explain, teach, and you need the other player to be willing to put in the hours to play a few bad games to learn. Yep. Build that strategy before, before you so, play. So you explain to that player, you got to read, watch videos, come over and learn. I'm going to teach you. We're going to play some practice games before it finally clicks. And then we'll get together and play again and play a serious game. Okay, maybe you still don't get it fully because you need to see a full game work. And, you know, 26 hours of time later, 50 hours of their time invested later, you could probably just pull a different game off the shelf and teach them and play it and, and be into the fun faster, which is why games like Cloud Spire, War of the Rings, Star Wars Rebellion, they just are good at collecting dust unless you have two players willing to put in the time to learn, practice, you'll have some of the best gameplay experience of your life. If you can get another player to do that with you, I am blessed uh, to have Mel to do that with me, but it's not for everyone. This game, on the other hand, you can learn it fast, play that shorter Fellowship of the Ring scenario, teach them how it works, play through a couple times, and now we're like going head to head and we're battling each other and you can get some of that play in a shorter amount of time, learn it faster, so... If you're looking to just play in this universe and battle against your friend, your wife, your whoever, like, uh, this does it cheaper, faster, has the same theme on it. Is it and it's still fun. Yeah. Is it supposed to play War of the Ring? Uh, replace War of the Ring? No. Is it supposed to be chosen over that? Like, you know, spend your money on one or the other? No. But it fits other situations, I feel. So, yes, you can own War of the Ring. Pull that out once a year. Play it with a friend. Teach them. Make an event out of it. Take it to a cottage. Lock yourself away on a rainy day and yeah, learn holidays it and or something. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. fun. But this is not there to replace that game, in my opinion. Like you buy this in addition to that game to play this and have some fun and play those places, locations, battle. Maybe you know have a strategic battle against another player and you know try to have your Nazgul stab a Hobbit in a, in a different game that's shorter, <laughs> easier setup, easier cleanup, all that. So eh, it's up to you. We're just showing you the game, presenting the information. Um, but yeah, of course, people are going to compare it and go, oh, it's not exactly War of the Ring, the board game. It's like, why, it's do, supposed to be. why do we need a game to replace that game? That game doesn't need to be replaced. So it's like, doesn't make sense. But I see people online like, oh, this isn't the same, you know, complexity or the same type of, it's like, it's not, it shouldn't be. Yeah. And that's why Darren was saying be. apples and oranges for sure. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. apples and oranges. But it's like, this should be compared to other two player card games or four player card games, which there's not many. Um, the four-player game kind of gave me the feel of, remember Game of Thrones first edition that had that melee mode? Yes, yes. Where you're like working together, but le but like people can change sides, but that definitely fit the Game of Thrones theme. But it gave me that kind of effect where you're like ca calling across the table, like, do you have something to help me? Yes. You know, that kind of thing with some player interaction on the table, it's fun. And a lot of two-player card games don't come with four-player rules. So if you're looking for a two-player card game that you can have a third player show up and play along with you, and they all like Lord of the Rings, this could fit that, you know? 
that might be stretching, but there are some people in that scenario where like they play like a two player card game and they're like, ah, it only works two players, you know, and it's awkward when you have a third. But this this has a way to 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 still play competitively and have that. But yeah. Uh, Beetle says you can play Lord of the Rings books in the LCG. I'd love to see you do it sometime. Yeah, we'll do it probably closer when, to when it re-releases uh, this fall. We'll probably start that. Yeah, we definitely want to stream that. I've been talking about streaming that on the channel for like 10 years. Or maybe 8 years. Whenever they started coming out with those Saga expansions, I was like, I'm buying all these and we're going to stream them all or play them all on the channel all the way through. And I kept buying them all and then we just never did. And now they're re-releasing, so it's like a perfect time to show that off and play it. So yeah, stay tuned. Beetle says, this looks cool, but for four player, it's hard to beat Magic the Gathering Commander. I've heard that, but again, like... Is there ways to buy, like, a four player Commander deck set for, like, whatever they said, 30 bucks this is? Yeah, 32 US dollars. And have the Lord of the Rings theme on it. I know Magic's going to have cards now with Lord of the Rings on it. I'm pretty sure I saw that posted or something. Which I think are useful in Commander, actually. <laughs> so maybe you are right there, Beatles. Um, <laughs> but again, you still have to teach the Magic the Gathering. Which I would never wish upon my enemy. I'm just kidding. I'm trolling. Uh, I just don't care for Magic. But uh, I just feel there's so many better card games. Yeah, I was going to say that, Beatles. Don't, isn't it a little... Yeah, was, okay, okay. It is more expensive to get four players around the table and have the cards, right? I guess you could play like, like a commoner kind of format or something, right? But anyways. All right. I think that's enough for this stream today. I think we've, we've, we've done it. We showed we've you War of the it. Ring. We've shown you how it works. Uh, we told you our thoughts and kind of explained it. Uh, so that's War of the Ring, the card game, coming out supposedly in November this year um, from Ares Games. So thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone who supports us on YouTube. Thanks again for Aries Games sending us a copy of the game over. Of course, thanks to our Patreons, YouTube members for supporting the channel, allowing us to do this kind of stuff. We appreciate it. Uh, again, if you want more playthroughs of this game, let us know in the comments below. Um, and that, that's it. Tomorrow we're back playing Oathsworn Into the Deep Wood, Scenario 3. Uh, Massive Darkness, we're playing the final scenario of our campaign for Massive Darkness 2 on Tuesday. Stay tuned for some other games popping up during the week. Um, yeah, more streams coming. So you're in the right place. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. And of course, hit that like button on your way out. And thank you all for watching. Much appreciate it. Oh, and thanks Mel for playing, I guess. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks Mel for playing. You're welcome. Yeah, I always forget to thank Mel. I thank her later um, <laughs> after punishing her. Uh, anyways, <laughs> thank you all for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs>